Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian on this jam-packed episode of Matt Men. Of course, I'm joined by Mr. PMX himself, Rich Stambolian. Oh yes, put him. Mr. That's PMX more job rule, though. That, that is a good job <laughs> rule. Uh, with us, with us, a uh, regular contributor to the show, a uh, good friend of ours, obviously, uh, known this dude for many, many years, a histor- hysterical stand-up comic the one the only the oh horny goodness. harry Tarjani. oh wow thank you very that's isn't a, that, that intro that took thing? a i mean that i'm horny yeah all the time i mean i am <laughs> but i didn't i didn't make it my thing but we now that you a rumor bring on the it show up about this oh that i that i'm horny all that the time you're, you're a horny dude i mean i'm i have a very active <laughs> sex life if that's what you're asking no, 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 no. Not, not, just, just like everything just everything. everything makes me horny everything i mean oh, yeah you know what? I've had a couple meals that you know are pretty good. Yeah, yeah a nice me too. slice of cheesecake that I go, oh yeah. You know, I yeah my, yeah. My wife made me ravioli the other day, mm-hmm. and I was eating it in bed out of the pot. Okay, I'm a I'm an utter degenerate, and I and I looked at it. I'm like, you know, it's kind of giving me a chub. Nice. I'm enjoying That'll happen. This. I'm enjoying this ravioli out of the pot. That'll Listen, happen. That'll make older guys, man. When you get when guys get older, food makes makes you horny. Listen, guys, uh, we have so much to talk about today. I'm glad Harry's here. Harry's yeah. headed to uh, Los Angeles for a little bit, for a little for, bit. For a so couple weeks. Uh, when he gets back, he'll be coming back. But um, Harry's a brilliant stand up comic. Oh, thank you. I've known I've seen a stand up unknowingly. I've seen your stand up without without. Kind oh, of, really? How did that happen? I've seen you at um, I didn't know that you were performing. This Where is, did, when, when remember, was this? I went I, I went this. to um, the guys that opened up. It's the stand? Yeah, the stand. There you go. Oh, I was on the stand. You're wow, the that's, stand. that's so funny that you came by. I mean, I, I wasn't there that often. It was like often. when they just opened. Wow, okay. I, I had no idea about this. And the whole, entire didn't... time we've been I friends. I quiet. Uh, there didn't you go. Word. Well, good thing I was funny. You were God very damn. funny. Very funny guy. <laughs> yeah, you could see that on YouTube and you know look up all my social media. There's some he does clips a great and Brando. stuff there. Oh, that's <laughs> right. The Marlon. You can look up Marlon Brando. That's the whole character bit I do. That's very fun. Yeah, I like it. He's eating a sandwich. He's eating. A, well, he's um. There is a documentary they were shooting on on him, and he insists on eating a sandwich uh, in between because he's Marlon Brando. <laughs> Who cares, <laughs> right? That was a Brando. great bit to do, but it was one of those bits that I, I had to stop doing because uh, it involved like purchasing massive amounts of food <laughs> every time. <laughs> it was like a whole sandwich, uh, a pizza, nachos. I had a jacket that just I just set up that I would have nacho cheese in the jacket. Beautiful. I set up a whole I thing. It. So I love it. Definitely worth checking out. Very carny character. Yeah. Amongst right. the many. Amongst the, the many. many. And the, the most carny, myself, Harry Turjanian, Harry as the Turgenian. owner in Catalyst Wrestling. <laughs> the owner of uh. Catalyst Wrestling. The owner uh, is the carniest of them all. We have so much to talk about here. Um, Good wrestling this week. I watched everything. I'm actually, I'm still on NXT. I'm rewatching it because I, I was. It's kind of hard to watch two shows at once. Well, like, yeah, that's that's why you shouldn't put them on against each yeah, other. Yeah, I know. that's I, a very good point, right? Andrew. <laughs> Rich, do you watch both of them at the same time, or do you take like do you um, watch one and then you go to the other one? I'll be honest with you. Yeah. So usually I will watch AEW like pretty much because I find it more fun. It unwinds me after a long day. Live. I will live i will turn on i will flip to nxt once mr gonzo goes bananas in the chat room in our in our group chat you know like we have our like group chat going so when our producer uh mg geek he's like yo you gotta check this stuff out i'll flip to the other channel and then like i'll come back so like that's usually how i watch it but other than that nxt thursday mornings before the show Mm. beautiful uh where do you want to begin rich you pick you want to you want to stick to gonzo's notes Let's stick to Gonzo's notes because I think the WWE stuff this week is gonna be super quick. You know, I mean, we have we have plenty to talk about, but might as well get get like that stuff out of the way because it's it's WrestleMania season and we need a sign to point to. Yeah, if, uh, yeah that's all we got to do. So a, a lot just to point to Harry right now. That's <laughs> I'm just right. that's the sign. I'm just gonna, you can see my finger pointing too. Uh, no, you gotta. That. So a lot of stuff is moving. Obviously, we're post Royal Rumble. Uh, we're, we're post that we're actually, we have a pay-per-view this Sunday, which we're going to be talking about NXT takeover vengeance day, which we are going to be doing a live watch along oh, nice. on F4W and uh, wrestling observers. I believe possibly both the Twitch stream and YouTube. I gotta, I gotta find out where we're doing it, but I, I think we're going to be on there for sure. That's great. Uh, I just don't know which platform we're going to be on. So we'll announce that in the next couple days. Uh, and but this is on Valentine's Day, on which Valentine's I think is great. This is going to create oh, a lot man. of conflict for some people. Oh, it's creating a lot of conflict for me. I'm just telling you right <laughs> oh, now. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is it? Oh, really? I, I'm, I'm kind job. of in trouble. 
Are you? Yeah. Oh, no, you got to... Uh... My wife told me it. This is it, uh, she believes this is going to turn into New Year's Eve all over again, like New Year's what Eve. What happened? 2010. New Year's Eve. I told her ten minutes. I'll be upstairs in ten minutes because I was doing like okay. a New Year's thing. I didn't show up till five thirty in the morning, drunk. I well, stayed in my boy. office, and she was devastated <laughs> that yeah, I just abandoned little, her. That's a little rough. Uh, a little you, rough. You, you made the mistake, and I mean, at this point, you should. She should be aware that there's a pay per view. Like you should make her aware. Yeah. In advance. Because there's no way it's going to be 10 minutes. Babe, there's a pay-per-view. What, what do you want yeah. me to do? Babe. <laughs> babe. That, that's how I babe, talk. I talk work. like a longshoreman like from a, the island. Babe, they, babe. They're calling me in. So, uh, WrestleMania season, obviously. <laughs> we're, we're on the road to WrestleMania. Uh, listen, it's <laughs> overtime. I got to do it. It's overtime. I got to no do it for I got to do it all. <laughs> It's uh you go you gotta go uh it's time and a half. It's that's time how and you half. throw that in there. But that's the problem is you make your own schedule. Listen, babe, what do you want me to do? Brian Alvarez called me. It's time and a half. Yeah. We could use the money. Yeah. You know, yeah, these floors aren't gonna <laughs> wax themselves. <laughs> what do you want a new bathroom, uh-huh. right? Uh so WrestleMania season, obviously things are kind of moving into that direction. We're seeing where things are falling into place now, mm. which is always fun. I always find that to be the most fun. I mean, that's part of the appeal of the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, that part is, uh, that really is the appeal. I think a lot of people get frustrated because we're in this weird, I need to know everything mentality now. When it comes to the internet, I'm not talking about the casual fans, right? But majority of the time, people want to know what the end result is going to be before we get there. And it kind of ruins the plan. People don't like surprises. Well, I'm excited about the edge thing because I legitimately don't know. Because sometimes they'll do it and you're like, all right, this is obvious that the, the guy on Raw has been, you know, fighting with Randy Orton. So now this is a chance to get back at Randy Orton or whatever. But yeah. with the, the edge thing is great because you literally don't know it. There's no there's no storyline reason that he has to pick any one of them other than he just wants a shot at the yeah. title, which I think is kind of right. refreshing in a way. I, I see. I, I'm still with. I, I'm not gonna say I would be disappointed if it's Drew, but okay. I kind of would be disappointed if it's, if it's Drew. Drew. Yeah, like I wanted. I. <laughs> I don't know. For for me personally, and I know some people don't want to see this, but I really want to see the Edge and uh, Roman Reigns match. I want to see seeing Spear versus Spear forever for over a year now mm, because yeah, that was okay. a plan, right? That they set it up a year ago, and that makes the most sense if you put Drew in this. But Drew was kind of in that setup also at the end of that Rumble, you know. So yeah, it could, could go. go what if it's Walter? Way. What if it's Walter? Listen, that that what if it's Walter? Some people are speculating. Maybe mm-hmm. you know what? I would not be disappointed in that. I don't want to see him in Balor though. Oh, you oh, don't want to see, I don't Edge, see and Edge and Balor. I don't want to see Edge and Balor. I don't want to see or Edge and Dunn. I, I for whatever reason that does nothing for me. Mm. Some people are into it, not for mm. me. So uh, you know, we're in this weird stalling time frame because there's another pay per view. There's mm-hmm. going to be like four pay per views back to back, right? Because we have. NXT TakeOver Vengeance, which we're going to talk about. Okay. We got Elimination Chamber, and we have AEW coming up. Oh, like, boy. all in a matter of three three weeks. Oh, good time to be right? a wrestling fan. Very good time to be a wrestling fan. So, uh, we're seeing a slowdown of the, what the program is. Kevin, o- Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns are still in a program director. Rich, uh, mm-hmm. do yes. you think they should end this at this point, or do you think it's fine to continue? Honestly, like, I want... I, I'm a big KO fan and I kind of want to see him unseat Roman Reigns and have like a decent title reign that is not sabotaged by a Goldberg. Okay, interesting. I think I think he's a company player. I think Kevin Owens has brought a lot of positivity to the WWE, you know, and here's a dude who toiled on the indies who I think we all liked as Kevin Steen and He's been main eventing for the last few years. I really would like him to take that title off of Roman, even though Roman is your your on TV Brock Lesnar at this point, right? Roman is yeah, the on TV Brock, yeah, pretty much. Um, listen, he's he's great. That promo on SmackDown, I, I don't have it in the notes right now, but uh, because we try to not to go back so many days, but my God, that promo mm. of him screaming at the camera. Yeah, you know, he's, and, he's and and doing some great work, and uh, and Heyman getting startled. Mm. Yeah, he's doing great work. Really over good there work on SmackDown. Really good work. So uh, that program is continuing. Edge and Bianca are waiting to announce who they're gonna who they're gonna challenge. I mean, be- and the Elimination Chamber could change all of it, but yes. I, don't, I don't I don't see mm. much changing. I don't see them ending uh, Drew McIntyre's 
run or, or Roman in through the elimination. Well, I guess he's not in the elimination chamber. Never Who? mind. Roman. Yeah. No, it's just but, the raw but Drew elimination is. chamber. But, but Drew, Drew is. Drew is. I just right. find, would find it weird if they did that. I mean, it's not like they haven't, but it's pretty rare. I, I always so, have a problem with that, right? We, we yeah. spoke about that last week, how you put the champion in. And the champion should be like coasting and prepping for his opponent, not right. defending. Right. I, I feel like having him defend kind of takes the like the build, the allure of who it's going to be out because now you're adding another element that you may for a lot of people they don't want to see. I don't know. It takes me out of it. Well, I kind of, I kind of agree to some, yeah, to some end. Uh, absolutely. But there, the biggest upset that happened was a couple of years ago with. Um, Bray Wyatt, right? Like he won at the Elimination Chamber and went on to face Randy Orton on the Worm thing, on the Worm WrestleMania, around, right? Yeah. Um, the weird thing about this Elimination Chamber, for me at least, is <clears throat> everybody involved apart from AJ Styles is the 2009 men's WWE roster. Yeah, it's a really? lot of older guys. Yeah, it's not a lot of new yeah. guys. And AJ at this point has been around for five years, so he's not a yeah. Four or five years. Eh, well, well, who do we have? Three. We have Sheamus, Miz, mm -hmm. uh, Orton. Orton, AJ, and Jeff Hardy, right? Yeah. And McIntyre. Yeah, you're right. right. 2009, yeah. Yeah. So this was like of... the, the chosen one era of WWE, right? Yes. Like, they were all right the when McIntyre came in. So it's very fascinating. And I, I feel like they might do like this bizarro move and have like Jeff Hardy win. Oh, God. Wow, that would be very yeah. yuck. That would not be great. Well, here's yeah. the other interesting thing. is I'm never a fan of um, the Money in the Bank winner getting a title shot before they cash the Money in the before Bank. Before they cash like it the in, Like the Miz. Yeah. He's, so it's like he's got two title opportunities, which to me is very... It takes away from a little bit. I thought the whole point, you know, now he's got a backup plan, I guess. I don't know. You know, I, I the Money in the Bank is an interesting thing to have in play. And some years they have it in play and some years they don't. Uh, the Miz having it, I don't think it's necessary for him. No, it's not. I, I don't, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't create any more excitement for me when yeah. I see the Miz. And I like the Miz. I do too. Honest. Same, same with me. But it doesn't, him having the money in the bank thing doesn't make it any more. It was more interesting when Otis had it, but obviously that was never going to, that was never going to stay yeah. <laughs> Otis being the, the champion. But imagine him cashing in on Brock. Oh yeah, Otis. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that would be. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would love that. I actually would have enjoyed Brock just sitting on him and smothering, just destroying just, him, just choking him, like he would just smother him with a pillow. Oh, with a pillow. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. A, it's, like it's, a my pillow. Yeah, yeah, like a my pillow. Yeah, get that guy involved. Maybe <laughs> celebrity Death time. Friends. You got to get celebrities involved. Yeah. What's his name? What Lindell? Oh, I don't, Mike. Mike, Mike Lindell? Lindell. Yeah, Mike, Mike Lindell. Lindell. Uh, Brock would like him. Former crack addict and current. He's oh, from Minnesota. Oh, Mike Landell? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they get guy. along. They, they, they would have get along. Ice fishing stories. Oh, and then, <laughs> so, and then uh, do a mixed tag with Bag, uh, Bad Bunny. Yeah. Shane McMahon <laughs> returned on Raw. Okay, uh, so I missed the context of this. Under what context did he return? Just He just showed up? Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Right, Rich? Fair enough. What did he do? Was like, like, I, remind me. What did he do on Raw? He just showed he came up. Out, uh, he came out, announced, uh, uh, announced the Elimination Chamber, I want to say. And then and that was it. Uh, and that was it. But this is making people think, oh, it's WrestleMania season. Is Shane going to come back for like a big match with somebody for no reason? Did he have one last year or was he not around for last year's? I don't, I don't remember one. Did he fall off <laughs> of anything last year at the Performance Center? That should be your question. No, mm, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. That. Oh, no. And is it two nights it? this year? Mm -hmm. It is two nights. Sorry. No, yeah, I don't think he showed up last year because he's too big time for <laughs> for the performance, the, the performance center. Yeah. But he did have Raw Underground happen. Yes. That's right. He was yeah. doing Raw Underground and then that just went away, right? But that just it, went away. But he went away with that. Yeah, that was it. So he's bizarre. been in the he's been in the basement the whole time. Yeah, you know, I I do think it's interesting because about six months ago, we started reporting that 2021, the first half of 2021, they're gonna really rely on bringing names back. That was always the plan okay, for the build for WrestleMania and even WrestleMania moving forward because they feel that uh, there is a casual viewer drawing power when you bring guys like Shane McMahon in or Bill Goldberg or whoever, you know, whoever the... the, the I, I get edge, that. Yeah, I get right? that. Disenfranchised fans, lapsed fans, you know, they're going to they're gonna come back. 
And they're really sticking to this. Uh, last week, we were talking about, Rich and I went into this discussion as to why WWE has really gravitated over the last, I guess, year or two to a lot of the older talent. The Saudi shows obviously play a part in this because it opened up this availability with with money to bring back guys that you never thought would come back. You know, you, you've seen so far this year, 2021, we've seen Triple H in a match, mm. right, on Raw. I mean, three minutes, but still there. Still a match. Marketed. Shane McMahon. Edge. Edge. Randy Orton in a major position, right, because he's an older name. Uh, Bill Goldberg. I still think of Randy Orton as current, though. You but know, he's in that weird he's, in between. He's, what do you think? He's Rich? on there week after week. Do you think Randy Orton's like an old timer now, or do you think he's? Would you consider him like part of the roster? I, I consider him part of the roster because he's been involved every step of the way. But I mean, by that regard, would you consider Sheamus or Ziggler old timers also? Yeah, that's or a, that's a they're part question. of the roster. They're still yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, that's a fair question. But they will be bringing in more people. Who Bec- else do they? Well, I guess you don't know for sure. Well, I, well, The Rock was one option, right? They wanted to bring The Rock back if they were in front of a larger audience. There's been name, a lot of names thrown around. And the reason why, and, and a lot of people have asked this, why is this, why are they going to this well constantly? Is because that is the only guarantee that they have for a large number boost or a consistent number boost. They, they cannot guarantee that by putting on a regular main event match. And they haven't really built great talent over the last six months. You know, if you think about it, here's a question for you, Rich. Uh, think about this. Who is the biggest star to come out of uh, homegrown? Homegrown, biggest star to come out of um, NXT, Triple H's NXT on the main roster. Who has become a what? huge star on the main roster that came out of Triple H's program, obviously? Do you want to include... Are, am I, are we including Seth Rollins in this? Because he was the first NXT champion? No, no gonna, that wasn't Triple H's NXT. Yeah. That was before NXT was a a weekly show. Okay. Type um, before the Performance Center era. Let's say I guess the Performance Center era well, no, was w- Triple H's project. <laughs> well, no, this, I, w- I would say I would say 2013 on. Okay. okay. Post Shield on. Let's say loaded that's i think that's a loaded question because off the top of my head you know we were just talking about kevin owens kevin owens has been main eventing for the last couple of years right um he was in nxt for a hiccup um balor i think when balor had his initial run on the main roster winning the universal title he was the most over person in that entire company um Mm. and then unfortunately he got hurt so i think that's kind of like a little a little bit of a sideways loaded question. Does you count Drew because he was part of the company and then went to NXT and then kind of worked his way back? See, I, I, I was trying to lead you somewhere. Mm. Uh, right. And I, I probably didn't present it properly. But okay. uh, if you look at the chat room, they kind of they kind of saw it. Uh, I would say that the women are the biggest success story out of Triple H's NXT and not so much the men as far as homegrown goes. Now, Sasha oh, yeah. Banks, Becky yeah. Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Bailey. These, this was, they got over because they came through mm-hmm. that program. That's true. But also remember, at the same time with NXT is when they revamped that whole entire women's division in general, because that was around the same time that they stopped doing the divas and give divas a chance type of thing. So it's almost like they rebuilt yeah. the women, women from the ground up, and they did a great job. Oh, that's fantastic! They've I been mean, able to the develop best that. parts of the. I think have been the best parts of the the show. But now they're kind of doing the same thing with women a little bit, where it's a lot of relying on Charlotte Flair, a yeah. lot of you know, uh, it's matured a lot. Of, yeah, so it, it, there's a lot of the old. Now they're old school, but Sasha Banks and Bailey and fi- I mean, I'm glad Bianca Belair won the uh, the Royal Rumble. Yeah, but yeah. there's a lot of relying on the old school, like Charlotte and yeah. Uh, well, I got a question for both of you guys mm-hmm. when when it comes to that, because that initial group of women in NXT, Bay, let's say Bailey, Sasha, Charlotte, I'll throw Paige in there and I'll throw Becky in there. Right now, those matches that they all had together in NXT, the takeovers, the Brooklyn shows, though, all those matches tore the house down. Yeah. Right. People got so happy with them. They threw them on TV. You're not really getting that on the current NXT product. Do you guys think it's because it's on USA that NXT has become a little more hands-on with the producers? That they're not letting them go for 20 minutes and doing like a catch-as-catch-can, like real wrestling match? No, I, I don't think it's it's 
the production for NXT. I think the problem. I think there's multiple problems, right? I, I think mm-hmm. the perception of NXT has shifted, and that that's because of AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think going two hours has been difficult because they were not a two hour product. What made them successful was that was not that they were a live two hour product. What made them successful was that they were a taped hourly show that they were able to tape multiple things in one shot and be consistent with the storyline and the angles and the ma- and the matches. Uh, I think you you kind of change the mold. And when you change it, and now you become a two-hour product, you're like every other WWE product, mm. and you start losing a little bit of what made you interesting and what made you easy to watch. NXT was the easiest show for me to that watch. Was great, yes, yeah, every wild, week because yeah. it was one hour long. It mm. got to the point. You saw the matches, you saw the build, and then you moved on. Yeah, and now it's a two-hour product. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think Competing. also the Competing. roster is kind of depleted to a degree. Yeah. I mean, they brought a lot of people up, not using them a ton, but a lot of people have gone through there, and then they're kind of in a rebuilding phase a little bit. I mean, there's some really good mm-hmm. talent. Timmy, I mean, I'm watching right now. Timothy Thatcher is there, who I like, but you know, it's still there's guys who are there a while. Like Johnny Gargano's been there a while now. Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era, they've been there a while now. So it's a weird little transition phase, I think, too. Yeah. But I don't think you're wrong. I think you know, there's a lot more two segment matches on NXT mm-hmm. than there would have ever been yeah. previously. So, uh, on Raw, Rich, your favorite segment, right, was the My Hole bit? Oh, my God. I Listen, it was funny. I laughed. I'm not going to complain about that. That was awesome. It was actually hysterical because yeah. I went... <laughs> so, I wasn't, like, paying attention watching it. I thought she got something pushed in there. Mm. Like, she fell yes. on something sharp or, like, something happened. Mm. Instead, she just fell on her ass. Right. But if you ever fall, I mean, maybe you fall on something hard. That'll, you know. I mean, my that'll butthole, hurt. I've never hurt yeah. my butthole falling on something. Um, like flat. Come on. Flat. Come on. <laughs> Spike, <laughs> possibly. Spike, possibly. <laughs> well, you, first of all, you're saying accidentally. It's different if you're putting something in there. That's Yeah, yeah you know what you're doing. Story. There's a lot of setup. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. It what, went viral. <laughs> it did. Do you think she was just doing that to pop herself and the and like Lana or whoever was uh, involved? Yeah. What do you and think? it just got yeah. picked up by the mic? Yeah, Rich. What do you, you think? You think she did it just to like go into business for herself? No, I think I think she was probably like she was caught up in the moment. She tried to make it fun and it came out. But, you know, maybe she was like, ah, the mics aren't going to catch that. Nobody's going to hear what I said. You and know? they censored it. They took it off the Hulu and the replay. They took it yeah. off. They took it off or bleeped it? They, they took, just it, took off. it off. Oh, man. Can't have any they fun. They took it off because they they posted it. So WWE intended on this becoming a thing, right? Her screaming my ass or whatever. Yeah. Because they, they, they chopped it up because they re- recognized that it was working. But they took out the funniest part. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've only seen it on social media because I didn't watch Raw this week. Oh, yeah. They removed it. They, they took the whole thing out. But I out, just so. saw her. Yeah. You're saying the funniest part of the whole show. Oh, the funny. That was the best part of the whole show. Yeah. But that also <laughs> that also leads you to understand it's such a big company that there's different divisions making different decisions yeah. about what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Nia Jax. That was a big moment. Uh, other Elimination Chamber matches have been added also, which we'll go into in, uh, next week when we're closer to the pay-per-view. Bobby Lashley will be defending the IC title in a triple threat match mm-hmm. with Matt Riddle and Keith Lee. So Bobby Lashley is up for a big push post-mania. I hope so. Uh, this dude looks insane. Yeah. Rich, He's- how impressive is this guy? He looks ridiculous. He looks like he he looks exactly like an action figure. That it's bananas. And I feel like at this point, I'm pretty convinced that he's just always looked like that since he was a kid. I I, I think that's how he was. Born. He came to this planet like that. Like that. He, he comes wrapped from in a, a blanket with a big B on it. He hatches from a rock. <laughs> that's how he was born. It's like a Superman. It's like a weirdo Superman thing. They're just rock people, mm. and he they crack the rock. I he mean, comes he's out. Always looked incredible. The guy has not aged one bit. His body is remarkable. Uh, he's like so, fifty, right? It's like he's like no. Well, in in his planet's <laughs> years, he's like four hundred and fifty right. years old. He's immortal. In Earth years, he's like forty four, forty five, whatever he is. Uh, I would love that to be a series. Bobby Lashley's uh yeah his his origin story. I want to see his rock parents. <laughs> you know. It's Tony Atlas is one of his Tony his dad. Atlas. Well, no, Tony oh Atlas is like a higher. It's like he's like one of like the higher or the council, elders. One of the elders. One of the yeah. elders. And he decided that he needs to go to Earth. Hmm. 
I like it. I like it. I'd be down for it if you Tony get Atlas DC. just kicks the rock and it just flies off to Earth. And that's how that's how we end that's, up with Bobby Lashley. How, how do we explain Lashley. why he, he got who, who, the impact years? Uh, he was he was growing growing oh, pains. Right. Yeah, he was just becoming the boy that we knew he'd become. <laughs> he got lost. <laughs> he got, he got lost. lost. He got lost for a little bit. He's Even always in phenomenal in phenomenal shape. He's always been yeah. in phenomenal shape. I just think there's needed to be something else with it. I like the hurt business. I like what they're doing. Yeah. We also have Asuka and uh, Lacey Evans for Elimination Chamber, and this definitely is going to set up an Asuka and Charlotte match. I'm now more convinced about this, that we're going to get this set up, and it's going to be Asuka and Charlotte, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't know how you, you're going to turn Charlotte heel, but doesn't that seem where you want to go? I think it's going to be a big swerve where Flair has been behind his daughter the whole time. I've been behind <laughs> like that, cutting yeah. one of those promos. Harry, can you do a Ric Flair impression? Uh, not really. I mean, you know, you you, you got the standard like to be the man. You got to no, no, beat the I man. I like later Flair. Oh, later Flair. He's uh, a little, he's a little like, wet mouth. Or <laughs> I'm gonna be in the Hall of Fame four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once when Wharton retires. <laughs> there you go. When uh, I go in with Triple H, and four times. So that's four rings I'm gonna pawn. <laughs> perfect Ooh. i love yeah. it i love rick flair love it don't get me wrong i love rick flair. um so rich where do you want to go yes sir yes sir uh i want to go to bobby lashley's rock planet i want to see okay. what else <laughs> that's where, what's that's there. all about so i think it. well uh i'm gonna be a good boy here and follow the notes let me ask you a question andrew yeah do you think the super bowl set a template for wwe regarding fan attendance at yeah so i got some news on this you want to hear it mm. shoot so uh, WWE's been down there for the setup. I know that they had people down there for the entire Super Bowl setup. Super uh, NFL was very gracious in allowing them to in allowing them to kind of see, see how this work. is working because uh, I think they they know that this is a big deal to put together an event like this, and I think that everybody's all these companies are kind of like, all right, the more events, the better it is for us. You know, the more we yeah, can gear up for this. So, so, do you think McMahon watched the halftime show with the weekend and went? That's good, but what about Flow Rider? What about Flow? <laughs> <laughs> They're in Florida, and you're not using Flow Rider. No, you're he just calls a big him opportunity. He just calls him Florida. He doesn't call. You're him not Flo using Rider. Florida. You're big in, you, I, missing a big opportunity, Roger. Honestly, I think with with like the the pop stars that they get, Vince is probably like okay. Like he doesn't have any idea. It's like Vince, no, we can get Bad Bunny. Not. You think okay. he, he knows who Bad Bunny is? Absolutely no. not. No, somebody no, definitely not. somebody. It showed him the numbers yeah. and then showed him the music video and that was the day he said yeah to that. Nice friends are Booker? Yeah. He loved it. Great. Who's that guy? I should get him yeah. to wrestle for me. Who's he that even know who guy? Booker is. Yeah. He, he doesn't even know who Booker is at this point. <laughs> you know, honestly, because I kind of feel like this is how that goes. His grandkids, like Triple H's kids and Shane's kids are like, yo, we love this guy. And then Triple H is like, you know, Pop, uh, my kids really like this bad bunny character and he's like okay whatever i don't care is he a real bunny i don't give a shit just hire the guy you know had one of those once we had a bunny and it didn't work (laughs) uh so they've been down there they've been they've been trying to figure out how they're going to pull this off nfl had more than twenty five thousand people right what was the final number that they had they had twenty five thousand plus they gave away like six thousand tickets wow for uh, I think to like first responders, right? It was that I, I, someone in the chat, I'm sure is going to remind me. But they had they had a large amount of people there. Um, there was a big story about Vince being totally against having the cardboard cutouts in the crowd. I never <laughs> heard that from WWE side. Mm. Uh, I I know that that's been an option in the past. I haven't heard anything about this one. It actually looked pretty good on TV. It I didn't. Great. I didn't. I didn't realize. I was actually annoyed. When I first saw it, I go, "What are they doing? Are they they have a, it's a full stadium. No, this it is looked insane. Pheno- no, it looked, it looked really good. It looked really good. It looked really good. So I believe they will be doing. They had seventy five hundred tickets for uh, first responders, so uh, frontline workers. So they had twenty five thousand fans, thirty thousand cutouts, thirty thousand cutouts, twenty five thousand fans, and seventy five hundred uh, given away. Given away. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, that's a big building. There's a lot of people in there." uh nfl pulled it off they i know people that were there for the event 
it's actually very impressive. There's this one machine that you just walk through and it tells you if you have COVID, if you if you potentially <laughs> have it. Yeah, like yes. it's able to do some AI scan and figure it out. That's what everybody was showing. Like I got a, I had a whole bunch of friends that went down there. I, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy guy. That that machine How doesn't well work. How well could it work? That that's one of those old like machines that's got light bulbs in it. That, <laughs> and light bulbs and a yeah. like a whirly bird thing I, on it. They go, I You're told good. Jess, I was making. I, listen, it's possible it works. You know what is this thing from the fifties? The thing that used this, to the belt that used the to belt, shake the you? girdle. Yeah, yeah. This the girdle thing. shaker. The yeah. girdle yeah. shaker. Yeah, it used to be. The theory was that if you shook the fat, it was technically moving the fat or yeah. exercising. I think that machine is the equivalent of that. I I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I think you're like, I'm gonna work out in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. First time I saw it in Pee Wee Herman. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And I love Lucy. I love Lucy. Had that too. Uh, yes. Victor was there uh, at the event in our chat room, so maybe he could give us some more information on how they did the scanning. But so WWE, I'm expecting. I'm not. It's not 100. I expect them to have the the cardboard cutouts. Mm. I expect them to have like legends in the cardboard cutouts. Oh yeah, sure. you know they'll do like 100. percent You know all these old timers are going to be in there, and they're, they're going to laugh about it. And then our truth <laughs> is probably going to be in the crowd with his arm around like somebody ridiculous. John and Cena, probably. Maybe a John Cena. Maybe I'm thinking even more ridiculous from like the 80s. Mm. Like Hacksaw? Like a Hacksaw. There you a go. Coco beware. A cardboard cutout of Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, or Coco, and he's talking to him, and he's like talking, and he's like, well, I don't know why he's not responding to me. Whoa. Yeah. He's really zany. quiet. Why don't you get up? The show is it's a great show. I'm willing to bet they're going to do that. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. I think that would be great. Second, um, WWE has an advantage here. They have, mm-hmm. they're selling 25,000 tickets. Or twenty to whatever. Let's say twenty. They don't have to use the whole stadium. They're not using a whole stadium. Yeah. A lot of and also a lot of it is going to be the set and everything. But they got two nights to do this, so they actually going to have about fifty thousand attendees. Right. You know, obviously they're going to overlap, but that's pretty cool. They're going to have fifty thousand people watch wrestling. Listen, I think that that would yeah. be great. I I like what AEW is doing. It's uh very lively with the live crowd. I think NXT is more lively when they have you know they have. I mean, obviously it's the performers in yeah. the performance center. But it's still a better energy to me than it is on SmackDown or Raw, to be honest. So I think having any oh, fans better. is going to make that WrestleMania uh, yeah. super fun to watch. So here, here's where things are going to get interesting, right? And then, and then we'll go into everything else like NXT and everything else going on. But I, I, I thought that this is a big story here. Um, so expect Tampa to have f- the, the cardboard cutouts. That's right. what I'm saying. For WrestleMania. Right. For WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Now the big question is, and this has been the big topic that Rich and I have discussed for the last month, what do they do post-mania, right? Friday was the conference call, the fourth quarter earnings mm-hmm. conference call. Uh, we have found out that the, the Thunderdome is very expensive to produce. Hmm. That's interesting. Because of the, the, the LEDs, the, the cost measures, right? You need operators, and then they have a third party that's helping with this. So it's a lot of hires to put this thing together. Mm. Uh, they so they took a little hit, but I think the hit was because they were in the performance center for so long. There was no expense, so now there's an expense. But they need to get out of the Thunderdome for baseball. Baseball's coming back. Oh, that's right. So where do they go on the conference call? I, I cannot remember if it was Nick Khan or somebody else that said it, but. They alluded that they are not looking to be in any building till later in the year. Later on in the year. That's what they kept saying. Not later looking on to in the year. Being in any building in what sense? Like a touring. permanent building or touring. touring? Okay. But they from everything that I've been told, that they are desperately attempting to find buildings to be able to tour. Because Florida, where where are they? They're not going back to the performance center. That is off the table. That's a right. that's that's gonna be terrible for them. They can't be in the Thunderdome. So what venue would be available for so them? They can't to go use? back to the arena because I guess the arena was being used for hockey and basketball. And ho- basketball's back and hockey's back. So they need to find a building that technically has nothing going on in it. Why can't they? But here's the Coliseum. You could do that, right? Um, yeah, you're right. Well, no, the Islanders. Are, oh, yeah, they are playing. They yeah, are the playing. Islanders are playing. You need, mm-hmm. But you, also, here's the other thing. Mm. Why does it have to be a permanent setup? Because the other alternative is touring. So if you're going to tour and build and break down and build and break down and build and break down, why not just 
work with one of the arenas and do that the same way you they do at Madison Square Garden with the Knicks and the Rangers. You know? They so a couple things here. Um, what what kind of threw a monkey wrench in this is that it got accelerated. The reopening kind of it, it's okay, gotten yeah. accelerated. I think everything has moved up by like two three weeks now with the reopening. New York City yesterday announced that MSG. Uh, Barclays Center is opening up on the 23rd or 24th with 10% attendance. Okay. So you're looking at about 1,700 people, 1,300 right. people in for each game. Uh, MSG is saying they're going to have 2,000 people in the building starting February 23rd. Uh, each event, any Rangers game or uh, Knicks game, 2,000 people in the building. I was told 5,500. Uh, and hmm. the way that they were going to do it hmm. is that they were going to only deal with season ticket holders because majority of Knicks games, a lot of people don't realize this. Knicks and Rangers games, it's all season tickets. Yeah, in New yeah. York City in, in particular. New York City. Yeah. And, and most of the tickets that you purchase are from StubHub or a secondary reseller of tickets. That's how, because it's big. It's a big part of whining and dining your clients. Season ticket, right. uh, season tickets. So they're looking to do 2,000 people. I am told from someone at MSG that WWE is very much going in that building in September. Okay. They will run shows in September in the Garden. That's not surprising. Vince right now has realized that the cost of running empty buildings and touring makes no sense. So they are trying to find out where they could have at least 50% occupancy. 10% is not going to do anything. But they're not going to make any money. They're losing right. money. They, I mean, they were, losing, they were losing a lot of money on just house shows in general, weren't they, when they were yeah, touring? Yeah, but it was, it was not... It, they were... But they, they were weren't doing TV. Losing. It was kind of even. You know? Right. So, Rich, where, what do you think they should do? I mean, this is a big conundrum for them because they have to leave the Thunderdome. They can't stay there. Right. They, they, what buildings are available and what states are they avail available? Because there's certain states that the restrictions are still high. Now, could they do some kind of like New York residency going between like MSG Hammerstein and whatever venues, because I do believe that that's not only Madison, would be perfect because they're not doing shows. Right. It's not only yeah. MSG that's opening up at the end of the month. I, I think it's actual like 10,000 10, building uh, arenas are opening. Right. So with at 10 percent capacity. So you could yeah. easily do Hammerstein Terminal 5 MSG do like a New York residency for WWE. And I think the other thing uh that you didn't mention was which i think is bizarre and i feel like this is just like an odd little thing the one of the reasons why new york is doing this is because they're they're doing heavy restrictions including you need to have proof of a covid neg a negative covid test within three days of the event you're attending yeah 72 hours right right so like for example let's say like i don't know give me a wwe pay-per-view Give me fast lane, right? Okay, Let's say fast. they're like, we're doing we're doing fast lane at MSG. Everybody's favorite pay per view, fast lane. Everybody's favorite, and yeah. then you you if you're a fan and you've been sitting in your house for a year, you're gonna want you're gonna get your ticket, and then you're gonna have to scramble to get this COVID test, like at like City MD or something, you know, to have like day of proof that you're negative, and then go to the show and wear your mask the entire time so you can see some wrestling. I think it 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 will. It will be a little more lively, kind of like you know how Harry said the um, the AW shows are a little more lively because they have even in a limited audience capacity, it still makes some noise. You know, yeah, but. yeah. The, the noise the noise factor is what sells it. I don't know now. You know, you're hearing you're hearing that Vince won't do anything under fifty percent. He feels like it's a waste if he can't have people in the building. But you're also hearing that the building availability is very limited, like New York. Like I actually, someone messaged me, uh, Rich, about the Hammerstein uh, Ooh, really? just now and said they cannot do the Hammerstein because the Hammerstein won't be open because it is too small of a venue. Only venues oh. with 10,000 or more seats could open. Oh, okay. okay. So right. the Garden Theater, for example, be can't be open. I think it's like 6,500 yeah. 6, people or, or so. so. Or like Best so, Buy either, yeah. 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 So that's going to change in the next month. By the time WrestleMania is over in April, two months away, there might be live crowds. There's gonna again. be. Yeah. I my expectation is that this ten percent concept here in New York that's kind of setting the notion up, um, uh, for other states. It's only for now, and in a couple of weeks, 
MSG and, and Barclays are going to go to the same. Be like, listen, guys, we're hemorrhaging money with only a thousand people and you can, we need to do 25 percent or 30 sure. percent, whatever. Um, so we'll, we'll get there. But I, I, I still do expect by April WWE to be touring. Interesting. All right. will be touring. Uh, yeah. For me, the, the other thing is I don't really love the Thunderdome that much. I don't care. It's okay. Yeah. I think it's a cool aesthetic, but having the fans watch virtually never really did much for me. See, I think that should be a part of what they do going moving forward. forward. I think NBA, NFL, I think every single one of them, this has to become an element of what they're doing. For now, or you mean permanently? I think permanently. I think they should start selling the tickets. Fan experience, VR experience. Let's ticket this. 30 bucks. <laughs> You could be in that crowd. You could be, I mean, obviously they're not going to do a whole screen, but maybe a couple sure. hundred sc- people like that. Yeah. Where now you get a virtual experience of being courtside yeah. or being wherever. They've been attempting this for like five, six years. Everybody, uh, NFL tried it and NBA tried it, not huh. ticketed, but they were running. WWE even has a VR experience. Yeah. I've seen but, those boxes every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, it hasn't been developed. But now there's a market for this, right? There's another sure. opportunity to make money. I expect every single brand to start doing this. I'm going to start doing it. You could be Hogan. You could be where Hogan oh is goodness. right now on the couch. You could pay. As a guest? You could pay to be, you could, you could pay to be in the studio. VIP? You can see what I'm doing when I'm off the camera. Oh, boy. Oh, you boy, get what you, no. you, get, you get all the experience. And also, you Hold can't on, stop see? it. Nobody That's knows a, what I'm doing right now. Nobody knows. You could see. Now you can see. Oh, boy. There you go. And his shirt's off. Yeah. His shirt is off. Put it back on. He's quick. So, there you go. And just quick. <laughs> he's so fast. It's he's uh, he's a trained theater actor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, NXT last night, Dusty Classic semifinals. MSK defeated uh, Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild. What what's the uh, what's the name of their team? La Legado del Fantasma. Legado del Fantasma. Yeah, thank you. Uh, they had a match. Uh, let me see here. Grizzled Young Vets. Uh, defeated Timothy Thatcher and Tomasa Ciampa to advance into Dusty Classic. So they're continuing that that Timothy Thatcher and Tomasa Ciampa issue here with this Johnny Gargano injury promo. I what did you okay? Did you see the promo, Rich? Did you listen to the promo? I did not. Okay, I had a couple issues with this. I didn't mm. like they did a throwback to the HBK super kick on. Sean, uh, on, Bret Hart. on Bret Hart, where he fell off the chair. They did, I, that, that looked good, but it was kind of mm-hmm. silly with Kushida standing. So the whole thing was that Kushida's behind them, and mm-hmm. they don't know, and Regal's talking to Kushida, and they're like, why are you mentioning Kushida's name? He's not here. And then they turn around and he beats him up, and mm. they did uh, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, Kushida should win this title. <laughs> I think so. I also yeah. am not a fan of heel Johnny Gargano. <laughs> Uh, I don't mind heel Johnny Gargano, but you know, he I think he's stuck between a uh, rock and a hard place. At and I'm, this point, I'm not saying, be, and I, I'm not saying because of his work, he's just so no. likable as yes. a person. I, I I kind of feel crappy not liking him or being told not to like him because you know, like he worked his ass off to get there. He really is the backbone of that that brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it doesn't come off natural. Like Randy Orton, natural heel. Brock mm. Lesnar, oh, natural 100%. heel. I yep. can't look at Randy Orton and say he's not. I, 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 it just he comes off as a natural heel, which works out. Johnny Gargano, natural babyface. Well, I want, I want you guys' opinion on this. You guys, you um, guys. I think the gar- the heel Gargano stuff is gonna keep going until there's a major babyface switch, and I think that opponent is gonna be Killer Cross at some point in the future. It might be a while before they they set that up because I mean they're heavily they're heavy on Killer Cross and who he's destroying, so they'd have to flip Gargano back. I mean it's only been what a year or so that Gargano less than that. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I I'm do never think, a fan of that. But I know what but you're he saying. works. He works as that super underdog baby face, and what better guy to put him against than this monster, Killer Cross? I. I, well, kill, we'll we'll talk about Killer Cross because he he's going to be carrying he's cross. the big store carrying cross. Yeah, there you go. Um, there is a possibility that that match will take place at WrestleMania with Balor, Balor and uh, assuming and, yeah. Balor. And I'm not I'm not doing a spoiler here. You mean the NXT Championship? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for the NXT Championship, that will become a WrestleMania match. That's a real. You know what? I'm into that. Yeah, I agree. I think it's for should. one yeah. reason. Yeah. I want to see those bonkers entrance from both of them. 
Oh, okay. Because Balor has to be the demon in this, right? You let think so? Let the demon get his first it's loss. Been a long time. Let the demon get his first loss mm-hmm. to another uh, fellow demon, right? What is carrying? He's a, he's a he's more of a a witch man. I think his wife's the demon. Yeah, his wife is the his demon, and he's demon. possessed by by her dark spirits. She sure. Was, uh, I, I want to bring back the term succubus. A succubus. Bring it, bring it back. She is succubus. a succubus. Didn't they refer to her as a succubus? I don't know. I could have swore they did. I just use that word a lot. More often than you think it should be used. A succubus? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. You call everybody a succubus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I overuse it. I overuse it. Are you charlatan a lot? Uh, charlatan, yeah. Uh, how about a Jezebel? A Jezebel? Jezebel. Or as I refer to uh, Ashante as a Jezebel. A Jezebel. A Jezebel. <laughs> he's, he's the Jezebel of New York. <laughs> By the he way, is. I really enjoyed that uh, that stupid busted challenge. The Ashante on one? the uh, TikTok, yeah, that you guys did. <laughs> Mad Men Pro Wrestling on TikTok. You got to thank Jonathan for all that, man. Jonathan does an he's amazing job with uh, with our kid. TikToks. He's he's like nineteen, and uh, he's in touch. He's with, nineteen with, with the, the youth, youth of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's in Good. touch with the youth of America. He is the youth of America. That's what he goes by. Uh, I met him. So, he came here actually. He was visiting. Oh, nice. Good. That's what you need. That's what the uh, WWE is missing. That's why Flow Rider ends up getting a phone call. He every... looked at me mm-hmm. right in the face and he said, "Do you know who I am? I'm the fucking youth of America." Oh wow! And he just walked out of my house. Good promo. Yeah. yeah. He got a slapped great promo. Andrew. Yeah. Slapped yeah. Andrew right in the face. Yeah. Uh, so if if they're gonna go carrying cross and Finn Balor for WrestleMania, I or some kind of match, it would be cool if they somehow pulled off. The Karen Cross entrance, but instead of the wife, it's Finn Balor in like a big swerve surprise. And then he Ooh. just attacks like Karen Cross like right off the bat, you know? Oh, I'm okay he with does, that. He I does like all that. the moves. Does all the I would like shit. if on, only if Finn is wearing the full uh Scarlet, the Scarlet ensemble. One, the, one, onesie? The yes. one the cat suit with the yeah. high heels. Like he's gotta go full incognito. Yeah. <laughs> I, like Absolutely. I don't want to I don't want to see like the predator hat. <laughs> that he come, that he'd come out with. Well, you know the what's, demon. It's so weird because he used to do a mm. lot of costume changes or whatever you call it. Different, you know, different licensing, ca- different character. Is it licensing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they yeah. can come up with something else because they managed to do this predator or the. Uh, well, what I mean, is it's, he? It's a uh, what's a his demonic name? Rasta. Yeah, I guess so. But is it's how did they not get sued by Spawn or whatever or Venom? Because it's not. Well, remember yeah. he never did the Venom thing. There, it, it's its own character. I guess they, but they've it, developed their own character. A harlot. That's another yeah, good one. A harlot. Yeah. A harlot. You know what? She's a harlot. Scarlet Bordeaux is a harlot. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. That's a harlot. She should have a like a scarlet like uh, S or whatever on her shirt. Oh yeah. 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 I'm into that. Yeah. Character wise, you have to preface character-wise. that with yeah, character wise. Yes, character. Yes, character. Yes, yes. Yeah. We only talk about characters on the show. Yeah. These are not real people. Have we ever like? I know a lot of places they take like personal attacks at the guys. Yeah. Unless you do oh, something yeah. heinous, like as a wrestler. Like, you know what I mean? Like, unless you commit a crime or you, mm. like, that's the only time we'll talk about your character. Like, when we're discussing these people, I want you guys to remember we're talking about the character and not sure, the human yeah. being. Because they, they, these guys all work hard. Even the ones that don't work hard, they're working hard at making this work. Absolutely. Um, Johnny Gargano, we've talked about the Southern Million Dollar Man, mm. uh, Cameron Grimes, his new gimmick. Uh, he arrives in a Lamborghini, he plays video games as therapy, and he naturally is invested in GameStop stocks and mm-hmm. l- took those earnings and invested dog coin, he called it. Dog coin. Now, I become a big Dodge coin, Doge coin investor. Okay. I've, I've been, uh, I, it, listen, people, I, one of my friends is like, you know, that's like snake oil. Snake oil, snake oil salesman, another great old school. Oh, great reference. old school. Uh, I'm like, dude, I'm doing okay on this. Bizarre thing. I'm not encouraging anybody to go and buy right cryptocurrency. It's I'm, a I'm, weird this is not a stock whole thing, thing, but I bought it at like a, I think half a penny. Okay, and it's at seven cents now. That's big. That's a big it's, bump. It's a nice little bump. It's a nice. But then little what bump. do you do with it? That's a whole other. Well, I'm gonna sell it and I'm gonna take that money and put it in my bank account. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, fair do. enough. So I like that Cameron Grimes is uh, kind of talking about this because it's very. Oh, the recent. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What mm-hmm. else was on the card? Our favorite Rich, Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon defeated Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Uh, Indy's working. She she looked better in this match, yeah, than previous weeks. Uh, to advance for the dust uh, for the finals for the Women's Dusty Classic, I really like Shotzi Blackheart. There's there's something interesting about it. Uh, 
Zia Lee defeated Cora Jade. Kushida defeated Austin Theory. We had Johnny Gargano by DQ. So now, uh, preview to NXT Vengeance. These are the matches. Rich, you want to run them down? Absolutely. All right. So we have the uh, Women's Dusty Rhodes Classic Finals, which is either going to be, it's going to be Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. Winner gets a future women's tag team title match, which could probably take place at WrestleMania. Uh, for the women's title? Yeah, for the for the tag for the women's tag titles. I I, I you know what I, I I should ask about that. I don't know. Have they Have you heard anything, Rich? Has anybody uh, spilled the beans on that to you? I do think the women's tag um, title division needs a jolt. So why not have Shotzi? I think it's going to go to Shotzi and Ember, and that's going to be the WrestleMania match: Shotzi and Ember versus um, uh, it's Nia Jax and Shayna still, right? Yeah. Where am I, by the way? <laughs> Where'd you go? Um, I'm on another planet. Okay, uh, I couldn't okay. remember the uh, I couldn't remember the uh, the title holders. Uh, we also it's have a lot to keep track of. <laughs> it, it is, is a lot of titles and also you know also uh, it's just, it'd be nice to have the teams where they're not fighting all the time with each other. Yeah, that would that'll be nice. also shake it up because you do forget that they're a tag team. That's their new thing. Um, you have the men's Dusty Rhodes Classic Finals, uh, MSK versus the Grizzled Young Vets. I mm. think, personally, I think they're going to give it to MSK. And I'll give you a reason. One, uh, I feel like having MSK on the roster is their retort to losing LAX to AEW. I guess, yeah. I mean, that makes yeah. sense logically, but it's sort of a weird battle for them to fight because I don't think anyone else cares. Right. Like, I think LAX uh, has done well at AEW, no doubt. But yeah. So, but but we've been we've been talking about this on the show about how like the the people that that NXT missed out on they're doing like a almost like AEW light, right? So MX, MSK definitely takes the place of like an LAX or I'll say the Briscoes, you know. Mm. Um, Kurt they still can't get them off that chicken farm. They refuse. To no. <laughs> they will not leave that chicken farm in Delaware. Oh, well, all right. Uh, Kurt Stallion is like the NXT version of Hangman Page, kind of, right? Mm. Okay, he's like a cowboy. Old, the, the old cowboy. Yeah. So I think I think MSK is going to take it on he's Sunday. He's a blonde cowboy, um, and those guys are awesome too. Yeah, very good. Uh, we also have the NXT Women's Championship: Io Shirai versus Tony Storm versus Mercedes Martinez. What do you guys think? I'm interested in this match because I want to see because this is going to kind of lay out what the the next couple programs are going to be right because right now Tony Storm is is hot her new heelish character is a nice mm -hmm. spin on the original character where she's you know a, a younger girl uh, tomboyish right? right that's right. her gimmick she's right, tough. Right. She's obviously she's she's a beautiful woman, but on mm -hmm. top of that, she's this tomboy and you kind of it connects. But the big story was how long can you keep this gimmick up? Because at mm -hmm. one point, you're going to kind of age out of being that right. cutesy tom yeah. tomboy. Now we've seen the development of this character where she has a little bit more mm -hmm. edge, which I really like. Mercedes Martinez, I like a lot. Io Shirai, obviously, we don't really have to say much because she's phenomenal. We all we all agree on this. Do you take the title off of Io and move her? Do you move Tony? Do you what I think Mercedes Martinez has to stay in NXT for sure. Yes. But yeah. Uh I we're, during the we're, obviously we'll do our speculation and everything on where we're heading with this matches uh for our preview hmm. when we're doing this live on F4W online wrestling observer on this Sunday for yeah. Oh dude, I didn't even ask you Rich. Am I screwing up your Valentine's Day plans? No. Oh, I felt Listen. bad for a second. Holy moly, well, I'm sorry. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. My yeah, wife and I do. My wife and I do not give a shit about Valentine's yeah. Day. Okay, thank you, good man. Thank you, good man. Good man. Yeah, we don't. We're not really doing much. Um, I'll probably take an edible and just hang out. That's oh, okay. Yeah, that's, after the that's show. what I'm saying. After, after the show. show. Take, after no, show. during the show. Before uh, the show. Love your wives, but don't be can forced I, can to I do I it on Valentine's. What if I lose Day? my mind and I just start, just start screaming at Brian and Dave? Oh my god! You on know? air, start calling them. Kind of edible is this? Oh, it makes me angry. Makes me crazy. I go nuts. I want to take one that makes me go nuts. Such screaming. I'll call Brian, start yelling at him on the phone. I think you're thinking about cocaine. Oh, is that what? Yeah, yes. that's a different uh, thing. Yeah, it's the wrong thing. 
wrong thing. He's been Sorry. really <laughs> into really into meth. <laughs> really <scary>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, that no is... drug use. We're making drugs yeah, yeah, here, of course. Obviously. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping here before we go into AEW highlights. Watch along, obviously, this Sunday, NXT Vengeance Day live. Matt Men Podcast is going to be live on F4W's, I believe it's YouTube or Twitch, maybe both. Maybe we could do it on our YouTube and then do it on their Twitch. We'll line up some guests again. I'd love to have Denise call in again. I'd love to have Garrett call in again. Uh, and I think that we should open up the lines for our viewers. So our viewers could call in and make this into uh, so, make this more into a traditional watch along. Uh, by the way, we did skip the main event of the NXT Championship, Finn Balor and Pete Dunne. I don't want to touch on that because then I'm going to go into the fundamentals of the match and where I want it to go. And I want to save that for this Sunday. But I do, I do think that Finn Balor should win. Uh, yes. NXT TakeOver we're going to be doing. Also, Elimination Chamber, we're going to do a watch-along. I'm not sure where we're going to be doing that one. Mm -hmm. But AEW Revolution watch-along will be on uh, F4W. So three Sundays in a I'll rush. be in the studio for that one. Awesome. I'll, I'll take off the following yeah. day for that. Uh, That's, a Sunday. That's a Sunday, right? I believe so. Yeah, oh, oh, wait, is it? Uh, yeah, uh, they, they moved to Sunday. Why did they decide that out of curiosity? What's the logic? <laughs> they moved it. Well, I heard a couple things. One... They've kind of plateaued with their number for the rating. Yeah. For the buys, right? They're about 100, and, 100 to 130, let's say, right? I'm just throwing for it. For their pay per views. I, I was told by somebody, not at AEW, but someone that, that is a partner of theirs, that this they're moving it for a multitude of reasons. But one of the interesting things was to see if there will be a ratings difference hmm. in pay per view buys. Hmm. If Saturday versus Sunday makes a difference. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying this is the main reason. But it was something that was brought up by one of these partners. So I'm not, it could be, it could be fight. It could be BR live. I'm just saying it's a partner, not AEW themselves. They want to see if there's going to be a difference in pay-per-view buys because it is traditionally Sundays are a wrestling pay-per-view night, not Saturdays. Right. For the last 20 some odd years. So it may, listen, maybe, maybe people are just very used to Sunday nights watching wrestling and not. Saturday nights, and you may get a nice fifteen percent, twenty percent boost in your subs, or maybe not. But well, also, Sunday nights are the uh, just traditionally from a television standpoint, they're the most watched night of the week cause because most people are home. Saw. Saturday night, mm -hmm. a lot of people are out and about, so they're going to miss. Yeah. I hope this does not stick. Um, for my own selfish reasons, mm -hmm. same here. Same I here. really, and you, you, you're in the same boat too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I love a Saturday pay per view because I feel less pressure. For the day, for the next day. Oh, yeah, it's a lot more excitement. Yeah, then Monday, you got to go right to bed, get up Monday. Gotta, it's always, yeah. And I can't ever go back to bed. It's actually difficult for me because I'm so hyped from talking for like five, six hours. And the cocaine edibles. And, and, and the and, cocaine yeah, edibles. Yeah, yeah, and the edibles. Wink, wink. No, uh, no, not so, true. Not at all true. Not at all true. Uh, so I can't, I can't, <laughs> I honestly, it, it's difficult for me. So selfishly, I like it on Saturday. Uh, I get that. It's a more fun energy for me when it's on a Saturday, a little bit. Did you uh, did you see the Forbidden Door promo by Tony Khan on Impact, Rich? Yes. Is Tony Khan the Forbidden Door? He's the Forbidden Door. He he now resides in the Forbidden Door on Twitter. His location is the Forbidden Door. Oh, wow. Listen, man, I, I like that they're leaning into this whole thing. And listening to that commentary last night on AEW, they're really making this like a honeypot for wrestling fans that are in the same boat as we are you know what I, I mean like i don't i don't like to get overly excited about stuff like when i'm talking about it on the yeah. show but yeah, yeah. I, I really th there are moments uh during the show uh especially the main event that i genuinely in i enjoyed wrestling like i was watching it mm. you know like yes. I, like i'm a big it, it's hard because when you're doing this like rich and i talk about this all the time if whenever I show like deep emotion for something, yeah. then the comments like, "Oh, look, AEW super fan or whatever, WWE, right, oh, right. You, you love WWE, you hate it." I love be, everything. They're saying and you're biased. I'm biased, yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know what? I got to tell you, the main event from I love that main event. I thought it was really cool to see everybody with their gimmicks, with their belts and the briefcases and everything, which we'll talk about. <laughs> uh, I, I, so like, I got into it, and that is a big thing. You know, the excitement makes a big difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely does. I mean, the, they got a good energy. Tony Khan, I like he's putting a little more uh, emotion into this character thing because they just start out as promos. And now I guess he's kind of losing his mind slightly or, you know, yeah. it's it's fun to watch. Yeah. So also this Saturday, we're going to have uh, Impact's pay-per-view, No Surrender, 
Uh, I am not doing a a watch along for that. Oh boy, uh, that I cannot do. I cannot do two nights back <laughs> yeah, to back, back as to a back. Watch-along. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting. So we got a we started the show off with, and I don't see it in the notes here. Here we go. TNT Championship match. Uh, TNT Championship. Darby Allen and Joey Janela. I I got to tell you. Joey Janela to me is becoming more and more like a shrunk Jericho. He kind of mm. looks like like you took Jericho and you just like squished him a little bit from like That's 1998. He, he he fascinating. You know what? I thought it was a cool match. I I thought Darby worked really hard in that match. Darby looked really good. Joey he was okay. He did he did his thing. I don't think it was this blockbuster of a match, but I thought it was a really good match. I thought they did a good job. Very good job. The commentary was kind of great to enjoy with that match. They they painted a nice picture. They did. A they, warm picture. The commentary team is so much better. They, they have an unbelievable... Even uh, one of my friends, Mike, does not care for AEW. Right. right. Casual fan. Just doesn't do it for him. It's not what he knows. He likes the stories and he's more WWE driven. Aesthetically, that's what he, he knows. That's what he watches. He says to me all the time, he goes, one thing AEW I absolutely love more than what WWE does is the commentary. Yeah, sometimes I can leave it on in the background or if I'm, you know, busy, you can't always sit down and watch the show. I can at least have it on in the background. It paints a nice little picture. WWE, it's very similar. Yeah. So no matter what show you're watching, same, it feels same commentary. Same, commentary. same and commentary. And I don't think it's the fault of those guys, the individuals. I think it's the direction they're given. Yeah. But AEW, it's just fun. To, I mean, it's also fun to hear them not talk about wrestling or, you know, mention something. Like, I forget something, somebody about, somebody brought up a, you know, weddings and wrestling and jim ross goes well i'm no expert on weddings and wrestlings none of mine have worked out so maybe i shouldn't yeah. you know i shouldn't comment on that uh jr talking about how he makes good mustard you mustard know? sure I'm, yeah i'll make a i make a good mustard uh so i i thought it was fine i i just found it funny i i, I don't know why I, joey janela has had not a great year as mm. far as where he was pre aw because he really was become Especially here in the Northeast, I, I should say, right? Yes, Northeast, yes. He was really becoming a, a, a big name on the independents. People were very into, Man. they were very into him. He and was the Indius darling. He was the Indius darling. And I think the cool part about him was that he was kind of a throwback, but still very new. You mm. know, there was something different he was doing. He, he had some edge to him. I think the Enzo chicken, you know, the chicken fight he had with Enzo. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Made, so made the whole thing look weird because he's like this tough guy, you know, and he didn't beat the crap out of Enzo. Uh, not to say that I wanted to see them beat each other up, but it kind of, it was weird to see that. And he's, for a majority of last year, he was on After Dark, AW yeah. Dark. Uh, <laughs> he was on, uh, he had that great match with Kenny Omega early Sure, you know, yeah. in AEW's TV, and after that, not really. You know, they didn't really do much I with would, them. I will say, there's a couple people. For the most part, AEW does a really great job with like trying to get everybody involved in something or another. But when they lose <sighs> people, they lose them pretty deep in a weird way. Though, as far as being lost in the shuffle, like <sighs> uh, Sean Spears is another guy who I'm like that. That with all the plans they had on, uh, with him, he's kind of been lost in the shuffle too. So it, it happens sometimes. I think Janelle is one of those guys. Sonny Kiss is another one. And okay. Sean Spears are just guys that they, for whatever Listen, reason, you and I both have worked with Sonny. Yeah, it's great. Unbelievable. Phenomenal. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, in ring talent, just, uh, they just haven't focused on him. I think for Sonny, I think Sonny's in the right place. Yeah. That he should be. I don't think, uh, I, I think it's going to take more time to develop. You know, where what yeah. character, wh- where are you going with the character? Where are you headed? Well, it's also, I kind of want to kind of want to piggyback on what Harry was saying. I think that the reason for that is now the success of AEW has drawn the attention of that forbidden door, right? So if there wasn't a Gals and Anderson or a Kenta showing up, that's or the cross promotional stuff, yeah. You know, like yeah. you would probably see Sunny Kiss on TV more. I also think that a big part of that early—I don't even know if you want to call it success—but like getting eyes on the product was that weekly challenge that Cody did. 
you know, because he was doing that. He was having these awesome matches with like tons of guys that you wouldn't even think about, right? And it helped. It helped a lot. It, it helped. Raise, yeah, yeah, it raised a lot of people's profiles. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, what's his name came from that, right? Who Kingston? Uh, Eddie Kingston. Yeah, Eddie Kingston. Yeah. yeah, had a big run out of that. So I think sometimes people just get lost in the shuffle over there, mm-hmm. which does happen. But Sean Spears is in a particularly curious one. Because they've they've tried to restart that like a couple different times, and then they just keep kind of forgetting about it. I don't know if he's gotten hurt or what have you, but yeah, he might be training. He might be helping Cody train at the Nightmare Factory. Maybe you know with that's uh, what I call my that's what I call my life the Nightmare Factory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with QT Angel. Let me ask you something. Yeah, do you think Joey Janela should be replaced by Enzo Amore at this point? I you know what. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care that for the dislike. I'm going to say this right now. I don't mm-hmm. care. I know you guys are going to hate this. I want to see Enzo back. I, I know uh, everybody hates this. I want to see I him back. I wouldn't mind seeing him back. Yeah. Because he reminds me of like the people around that I see every day. Oh, that's for oh, you. You know how many yeah, Enzos yeah. I yeah, see yeah. daily? You know how many I mean, Enzos li- I run into? Guys literally named Enzo. Guys literally 35 named Enzo. Enzo. 35 yeah. Enzos. I know too many Andrews. I know too many Andrews and Enzo. Andrews. I don't like when I meet another Andrew. No? I don't like no. it when I meet another Rich. That's got to be. Uh, I rarely meet another Harry, so it's Never, fine. But you no. guys must be dealing with that constantly. I, I I get very angry when I have another Andrew. There was a, there was an Andrew to work with me, mm-hmm. and I had to set up his email address, and I refused to put his name in his email address, just last name. <laughs> That's so petty. I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. I'm petty. I didn't do it. It's so unnecessary. Yeah. It's not like you're not even going to see the email address. No, I'll never see it. But I don't want to see it. I don't care. So we got. See... <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, w- I want to get through this. I know that, uh, that we're running yeah, out of time yeah. here. Uh, we also had Sam, uh, Chris Jericho and MJF defeating the Acclaim. Sammy quits the inner circle due to MJF. I, you know, this dude is, has to become the number one babyface in this company after this, Sammy? right? Yeah, yeah. If yeah. it's thick, Sammy, ha- this has to work for him. I love this inner circle story. It, it's every week. It's made sense and it's been consistent. And the whole thing, like, I also like that they plan stuff out with the inner circle thing. So, like, next week is going to be the town hall. Like, I don't even know what the hell that means. But they have a plan for next week, you know, when they do it. Or next yeah. week, we're going to give you the decision. Like, like, it's been really good. And this is, it's a natural progression. Like, I told you I'm quitting, and I'm quitting. Yeah. So I thought that yeah. was good. Um, what else do we have on this? I'm trying The Darby to, Allen to, stuff. The Darby Allen stuff we went through. Uh, Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson. Cody and Lee, yeah. So that was interesting. A nice promo on how happy he was to be there after the match. Uh, I guess they're making, they're making this kid. Into something. And Cesar, Cesar Bonone too, because he was on NXT for a while and then yeah. kind of disappeared. Yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, then we had the unsanctioned falls count anywhere. I'm going to skip through this here. Uh, we also got a Good Brothers promo, which I thought was interesting. We saw that. It was uh, great. Yeah. So we got the unsanctioned falls count any- anywhere match with Kenta and Kenny Omega defeating John Moxley and Lance Archer with Jake Roberts. What a bizarre match to read out loud. But oh, yeah. I thought the aesthetic of, you know, Kenta came out first with his briefcase. They brought up IWGP, US, you know, the U.S. title positioning. Yeah. They brought up a, a lot. lot of New Japan stuff, a <laughs> lot. Uh, Kenny Omega comes out with the, with the obviously, the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Mm-hmm. And John Moxley, IWGP, U.S. title. That's right. Oh, I popped. I popped hard I did. when, I, when I saw that belt on TV. I liked it. And there's an internal story here amongst all three of those, all four of those people in the ring, right? Kenny had the mm-hmm. U.S. title. Moxie has the U.S. title currently. Archer ch- challenged for the U.S. title, still in the mix for the U.S. title. Yeah. And Kenta holds the briefcase for the U.S. title. It's all revolving. It's a good little story. Really good story. Is Archer there. still with New Absolutely. Japan technically? I, I don't know what their relationship is. I think he has the same deal that Mox has, where he has the option to to go there if he wants to. Yeah, but I, I was told that something happened there. Like, it wasn't great, the relationship. Something that, I, I don't, I, I should follow up, actually. I'll take a note for that. Um, Here's a cool thing, though, Rich. Shoot. How interesting was it to see that, how they were positioning Kenta to be so strong? I thought that was really cool. I also really think they planted the seeds for more more of a internal bullet club feud in the future just because the way they're interacting you know uh they put kenta over big time uh, especially mox too that you know like yeah. they i feel like for such a 
for such a limited amount of time, they gave you a taste of what they could bring. Like that diving foot stomp, unbelievable. Yeah. Oh my god. That, yeah. Uh, it, and not only was the the stomp, you know, so he he comes down with the legs. Yeah. On, on his arm, obviously, and then he mm. freaking nails him in the in the face with the knees. Yeah. <laughs> That's the brutal part. It's the after effect that was brutal. I thought it was a good match. Uh, you know, top guys here. All of them were top. There was a cool uh, Bullet Club thing where mm. Gallows and Anderson went for the two sweet. And which buck did one of them did in the other one's like, no, 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 we do that in the back. We don't do that on TV. Matt. Matt was like, that was like that. Matt was like Sting standing right over there. It's embarrassing. I don't want oh, to do funny. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he and then yeah. they started screaming Stinger red and red and black or whatever. You know, they did the whole thing and they walked off. Cool nods. Yeah. You know, you got a WCW nod, you got an NWO nod, you got a Bullet Club nod. It, For the people who get it, they get it. For the people who get it, yeah. Get it. Now I want to ask right. about the people who don't get it. AEW does have a lot of casual viewers. Sure. Yes. A lot of new new younger viewers. How many people think that IWGP is the actual promotion? They might. Because they said IWGP True. way more than New Japan. And I, I that, was that curious about it. Yeah. Because WWE does the same thing, too. If you ever realize, they, they always mm -hmm. refer, or they did up until like 2017, they would always refer to the IWGP titles. If you had an IWGP, like when AJ Styles debuted, right? They said, right, right. former IWGP champion from Japan, same title Brock Lesnar held. Yeah, it just sounds cooler, I think. It does. It does For a sound brief cooler. window. You get these little brief yeah. windows where they do cool stuff like that. With and then WWE? They, yeah, and yeah. then they shut it right down. Yeah. Like, don't even mention that the guy used to wrestle up up until yesterday. Yeah. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Anything else happened on the show that we missed? Uh, Well, I think after the show, they did that. Uh, Don Callis did, like, the, uh, the New Japan style presser. Yes. That they released later on with... Uh, with the titles Kenny on the, the table. Right, with Kenny and uh, Gals and Anderson. I want to see that. I didn't see that. That sounds so fun. So they Don Callis sarcastically kind of puts over Bullet Club, and he's like, well, you know, you can thank me for your T-shirt sales, basically. Like, we know they went up 40% last time. Uh, you know, so, the, you know, it'll be good for you guys. Which also makes me think you're going to get more to this, you know? And, like, we mentioned this, like, a couple of weeks ago. A lot of these, the Bullet Club guys live in Florida. So why not? You Why know, not? yeah, Tama Tonga, Jay White had these guys show up. Um, I like to call like that all that all the stuff that AEW is doing with Kenny and the Bullet Club and all this. I feel like it's like, you know what, guys, this one's for the nerds. Yeah, definitely. I it, It's yeah. definitely for the, the hardcore fan. I do like how it, it, and one more thing here is that, you know, you got a guy like Jericho mm. and Sting on that card. They're there to elevate the mid card. They're being used. Yes. In, and they're doing a, it well. Because and they're, they're doing it well, yeah. Parents thing with Darby Allen making him a big star. And Jericho, I mean, that whole group, even mm -hmm. Hager was like sort of damaged goods. And now, now he's, there's some value to mind, all of those. I don't right. mind seeing him right. wrestle, you know? Uh, it, it, it is interesting. Also, Ryan Nemeth uh, had another match, got murdered mm -hmm. by, by Pac. We yeah. saw that happen. And Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament Round 1. Thunder Rosa defeated uh, Layla Hirsch? Hirsch? Layla Hirsch. Right? Hirsh. Legit Layla Hirsch. Hirsh. Yeah. So uh, that happened. And then they, they drug Darby episode. Allen across the parking lot in a body bag. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they, dra I, they drug him. Drag I, him. Wish, I wish they did a bit where Taz owns an evil pizzeria. And all the guys. <laughs> And all the guys work there. Like Brian Cage is slinging pies. Uh, Ricky Starks is doing deliveries. Taz's son is wor working the register. I'm into that. Like a real family affair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'd be, I'd be really into that. <laughs> I say shoot it as a reality show and air it right after Bobby Lashley's uh, origin story. You call it Paz. <laughs> Paz. Oh, Paz, Paz for pizza. Paz. Pizza. Paz. Right. Pick a That's, Paz. They don't. They don't sell. They don't sell pizza. They sell Paz. <laughs> they sell Paz. Just Paz. We don't. Yeah. It's it's a different thing entirely. Also, very unique it's concept. Paz. Really unique. You could order rare, medium, medium rare. Well done. That's how you could order pizza. Oh wow! Okay. So they're like, you like, okay. yeah, I like a medium rare Paz. Really? It's just mush. But he gets very angry when they don't do that. Kind of like the yeah. soup Nazi. Yeah. So he goes, well, "How uh, do you want it? You want it well done? You want a medium? What do you want? We don't sell them. We don't sell what? What are you talking about? We don't sell those. We sell Paz here. No pizza, Paz. Get out. I got a, I, I got a pizza related question for you guys. Yeah. 
is ordering a pie well done strictly an East Coast thing? No. I, I actually, the first time I ever heard about it was on the West Coast. Get out of here, really? I was in California. I was at Spence's, and when he ordered the pie, he's like, hey, can I have a well done? I'd never heard anybody order a well done pie before. Interesting. It's like five, six my, years. The it's only past ten years ago, maybe the only person who's ever done it in my life was my dad. Well done. Who, who wanted them well done? It, it was at Pizza Hut too. He didn't like that how soggy the, <laughs> the cheese and the sauce was, so he'd always uh-huh. make them cook it. And oh, by the way, he would, we would only order the Super Supreme. Always the Super that, Supreme. It was always two mm-hmm. Super Supreme pizzas, and we never deviated off that menu. No stuff crust for you. None. Well none of that crap. He was not into any of that. It was the Super Supreme. That's my- it. My father, maybe it's an immigrant thing. My father loved ordering from Domino's and Pizza Hut. Like, if you're like, oh, let's get pizza, he wouldn't think like Luigi's or yeah, my whatever. Dad, the Lucia's. Same thing. He would yeah. say, like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, which one? You know why? I, and I'll tell you why. It's the coupons. Oh, okay. The coupons were sense. his thing. He's like, oh, which Ooh. one has a two for five or whatever the hell the, the deal is? Yeah, but I mean, we stuck with pizza. I don't, I don't know that my dad, I have no memory of my dad ever ordering. Uh, from a local pizzeria when I was a little kid. It was always Pizza Hut, not even Domino's, huh. just Pizza Hut. Yeah. Wow. For like a decade straight. I don't get it. I don't know. I ordered uh, Nona's when, uh, Rich, when uh, Jonathan was here. <clears throat> he experienced a penne pie and a oh regular marinara pie. That sounds incredible. What, what did you think? We got a, uh, they have like, these ridiculous i know we're taking a pizza tangent here but sure. no known as is right is very close to where, where you guys are right now and uh the first time we ordered from there we got like this like ricotta gruyere mushroom uh soprasat pizza oh that could be was, dangerous if they get too fancy it could be dangerous yeah. rich how is it this? was it was amazing and we didn't get sick of it you know like you know, sometimes wow, you get those okay. fancy pizzas you get those fancy pizzas you eat a couple of slices and you're like oh big mistake yeah this was fantastic. It was pretty good. Nice dollop of ricotta on top. Oh my god, that They're sounds phenomenal. amazing. They're great. Maybe everybody's getting movie. horny right now. Everybody's yeah, getting horny. Getting horny. Uh, yeah. Let's see. In other news, obviously, uh, AEW Women's Tournament in Japan brackets to air on YouTube. We had asked this question last week. Where the hell they're mm-hmm. airing this? It's starting on Monday on YouTube, so you could go to the AEW uh, YouTube account and you'll start seeing it there. AEW tickets are not on sale yet for Revolution. Uh, it should be in a week or so from what I was told. I, I'm this. I don't know why it's delayed. The same thing. I mean, we know why WrestleMania is delayed right now with the ticket sales. Sure. Um, they don't know what they're doing, but this is you know, less yeah. than two weeks away yeah. or something. This is less than two weeks away. So they, well, three weeks away, but I expect them to sell really quickly. Maybe, maybe they're trying to figure out if they're going to open up more tickets. You know, they're, instead of having a thousand people there, you maybe maybe you could do two thousand people. I mean, listen, I'm happy that more people that can attend the shows. You know, yep. they, they've been doing good with what they have too. It's a good energy. I like it a lot. Uh, WWE earnings call stuff from Friday. Uh, they don't believe they've lost eyeballs. They've just moved to digital, and this is interesting, right? Um, their argument as to why the ratings are low is that people's media consumption has changed, and People don't sit traditionally and watch a three-hour show. This is a big problem with baseball, right? Baseball, during the pandemic, wanted to, wanted to experiment and speed up baseball. So how do they do that? Extra innings, you put a man on second base, which I absolutely hate. Mm. Sucks. Mm-hmm. Ruins absolutely the whole tradition. It. Ruined the, the whole thing. It ruined the integrity of the game. Hmm. I'm big on the integrity of the game. See, I think it's a boring game. But I'm but... talking about the 90s integrity where everybody was juiced up. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's all gone. It's ruined. It's ruined. Uh, so... Uh, Miss the good old days. The, the good old days. So uh, they're they're saying that there's some legitimacy to there that is. to a degree because listen, I I, ca- I can't sit down live and watch three hours anymore. Well, here's the thing: you don't have to, <laughs> right? That's why you can check it out. But w- do they count Hulu as that the next day? I, they- I'm not. I think they're talking about actual. You know, I don't think they're counting Hulu because Hulu counts part of Nielsen, part right? Of the, they yeah. participate in Nielsen. But I, I think they're more talking about YouTube, YouTube and Instagram, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. How much wrestling can you consume? I could go on TikTok right now and know everything that's happened in wrestling in WWE over the last two weeks right on their yeah, page. You can that see is, all of that. That is not a traditional means of watching wrestling. It's a very unique way that people are now consuming. They're consuming the stuff that they find interesting and then they move on. That doesn't mean that they're not fans. Right. Globally, you talk about Billions of people have seen WWE. 
Right. So right. what do the YouTube numbers look like on their on their? It's, it's astronomical. Their, their YouTube is ridiculous. Right. It's been down. It's been down so far, but uh, it's still you know very high. All right. So for example, a clip of from whatever happened on Raw, right? Okay. Mm. Uh, whatever the main event was storyline wise. What does that number do on YouTube Let's versus see. the one point whatever million has been the kind of average lately on Raw? Let's see. Let's go to WWE's YouTube. 73 million subscribers. Here, okay. Jesus. Right? Great number. Great number. Um, let's go to... I do all right. But you I, want, yeah. Let's go to Monday because Monday's a good, good example here, right? What was the main thing on Monday? Uh, I don't even let's remember. See. Okay, so Did Monday. Here we go. Ah, here we go. You ready? They don't post the whole 1. show. 1.1 million views for Lana versus Nia Jax. Okay. Okay. 1.1 million. Keith Lee uh, and Riddle got 400,000 people. Mm -hmm. And by the way, these are three minute clips. It's, it's abridged, right? Not yeah, yeah. a full match. Uh, Naomi, Naomi Shayna Baszler got 600,000. Uh, let's see what else. Bianca Belair encounters Asuka, 290,000. Drew addresses Sheamus, 195. Mm -hmm. Edge provides an update on his WrestleMania decision, 1 million viewers. Okay. So they, you know, if it's a big moment, they'll hit a million. And, and then after yeah. that, it's anywhere from 100,000 to 400,000 views. I mean, there's some validity to that point, but that number needs to be a little bit higher. But think than, about yeah. how much content mm -hmm. they, last night alone, okay? Last night alone, they did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There's like 20 videos sure. in a day that they sure. upload. Yeah. Well, look, look at look at this, because right underneath that raw like viewership, you have the SmackDown viewership, and I think it's fascinating that you have 2.3 million views on the Kevin Owens, Edge, and Roman Reigns. Wow. Set, wow. That's a lot. Which I feel like is going to drive whatever edge and ko stuff forward you know i think they look at the youtube stuff and they're like how can we do more of this you know like look at <clears throat> look at damien priest versus angel garza five hundred thousand views which is still awesome but it's not over a million right and i feel like that's the marker that they always want to strive towards so looking at this is actually hysterical mm. i'm looking at their top videos ever mm. uh, on their youtube the most watched video, 255 million views seven years ago. Randy Orton Jeez. makes it personal with Triple H when he when he hunted Steph. Oh boy. And Triple H was handcuffed. Wait, what year was that? Seven years ago it was uploaded. That was seven years ago? That happened before seven years ago. Number two, 184 million. John Cena, Brock Lesnar get into a brawl and it, it, a whole ring, everybody jumped the ring and tried to split them up. Number three, uh -huh. John Cena's proposal in 2017. Oh, wow. 178 million. That's got to be awkward. Following that, Following that, John Cena and AJ Lee kiss after Cena's victory, 149 million. John Cena, Batista, Rey Mysterio versus Randy Orton, and I forgot who the opponents are for tribute for the mm -hmm. troops. That was uploaded seven years ago, 145 million. Great Kali, 20 man battle royal for the world vacant world championship that he won. There's That's two Kali's be... in this top 10. 134. Yeah, there That's are two. That's got to be India numbers, though. Yeah. Which works out. It makes sense. Stephanie McMahon slaps Roman Reigns. 134 million. That's great. Uh, very interesting. It says it, a lot. It's this it says does. so much because who would think that AJ Lee and John Cena kissing from eight years ago would be the number Why four that? most watched thing on their? On she their wasn't platform. even on Total Divas because it's a younger demo. <laughs> it's you know? a lot of international viewers. It's interesting. It's very interesting to me. Th it's this is very fascinating too because like the way. Like what this tells you is that John Cena is still on top. There you go. Right. Still popular. Like, still cracking. Still popular. He's in the top 10 no matter what he does. I think but that. Just... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Rich. I apologize. Uh, I don't know. I was, I was going to say, I think that era of like, these are, these are things from eight years ago. And this is also like kind of at that start of like total Bellas and total divas yeah, and all that. Yeah, sure. Right? Well, that explains the John Cena proposal one that I get because right. that would make sense. But I mean, the rock's not in there. You know, there's a lot of things that just don't make sense about that mm -hmm. list. Also, it might've been a different algorithm, you know, who knows? Like at the time, I don't yeah. know what YouTube was running with. It's fascinating. I, I listen, I think, I think the YouTube numbers skew younger. 
Definitely. They should, yeah. And, yeah most definitely. you know, if you're a John Cena fan and you're like 12 years old, 11 years old, and now, you know, him kissing AJ Lee, you may oh, be no. into this. <laughs> You yeah. may be into it. Oh, Rich is saying that it's they're terrified. By it. Like, what's he doing? Oh, girls are icky. Let's see what, <laughs> what else is on doing? this page. And then, uh, by the way, Q&A, guys, submit your questions in the chat. We're going to do our best to answer them. Rich, do you want to curate them this uh, this time? I got them ready. Oh. Whenever you're ready. Whenever right, you guys you know are ready what? to go. Let's just dive into this. Let's do Yay. the Q&A. All right. So Corey Richmond asks, will there be a women's SmackDown Elimination Chamber match? Very good question. I have not heard anything about it nor have i asked so that's a good question and, so I'll, how, and I'll find out how you. many actual elimination chamber matches are are scheduled right now let me yeah. see what's been announced let's see i think one just the raw men's thing i think there will be a women's one they usually I, do at least one yeah, no one. there is a women's one yes they they will have a women's okay. elimination chamber match okay cool. fair enough that answers that, that answers uh that. scar happy asks is tony are the tony khan promos on impact the best thing of 2021 uh i gotta tell you it's fine i don't doesn't not it doesn't really like i mean i enjoy i enjoyed when it's he okay. was do, when he was doing the holiday ones during 2020 and going we're here to help the you know, we're all about helping the less fortunate yeah. by which i mean impact wrestling and that's a pretty I, I good mean, line it's good it's fun it's fun it's fun it's not bad it I doesn't have any, to be great. It does anything though. I don't think it's it's doing anything other than popping the people watching. Maybe, but it also has a little bit of it. It's just an an addition to the storyline. It's just something. It only takes a minute. You know, I'm fine with that. I'd rather that than another either backstage promo or yeah. you know, it's just something a little bit different that you and you're not going to see it again because it's rare that a company invades another company and buys ad time. It's I think it's cool. I, I don't think it's hilarious. I don't think it's you know the. The, for me not the best moment but I, I i enjoy it all right yeah okay uh bachelor 3000 asks how come mvp can wear marvel gear and balor can't wear marvel dc inspired paint what is he wearing what is it like MVP a black wearing? panther initially it was a black panther style suit but it's not a direct i mean it, direct it has like the same collar that the black panther one did i guess and, it's yeah. broad enough of it like i don't think it's that's as recognizable well you know what though gargana does like the wolverine stuff yeah but it's color scheme yeah. so you yeah. can get away with color schemed um i also right. agree I, I don't I, but but balor used to dress up as the joker and the, the venom and the venom yeah so i mean well you, you... well ray ray came out as joker once right like complete with the makeup and he did spider-man and like every year he would come out as like a different guy well those and... outfits are are influenced but i mean balor came out in the exact same costume that heath ledger's joker came out in the whole coattail like there's a, a weird level with copyright infringement so it can yeah. be ray mysterio's thing was influenced so it has the same color scheme it has green hair and and all that stuff or i remember like alexa bliss used to do which mm -hmm. was with that tag team I forget the name of uh, their names, but they did. They all wore Iron Man inspired gear or Johnny Gargano did the same thing. It's the same mm -hmm. color scheme, but it's not the exact suit. Right. Like right. WCW did with Arachnaman. Arachnaman. Oh, I remember Arachnaman. Whose yeah. idea was that? Who book? Who, was that a dusty thing? I think it was a Jim Hurt. Jim Hurt. Time it was frame. Jim Hurt time frame. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Jim Hurt era. I think it, it, it's got to be something to do with like the public purview of these performers like i remember seeing i think there was a there was an icw show where finn came out as bane full-on mm. mask trench coat vest right. and the whole nine right i think it was finn so maybe it could be an international thing or it's just like you know they're not they're just guys showing up at an indie show you yeah. know like the new japan stuff is fascinating because he did he came out legit as like venom on one new japan show yeah yeah, you know? I, I still think Finn could do it. I just don't, I just think they don't want to. I think McMahon settled on uh, as a demon is the a, best, yeah. and let's. The, I and think the that's demon what it king. was. Yeah, I think that's more the, it, it than anything else. Yeah, yeah. So weird. Uh, did you uh, Scar Happy asks? Did you hear about the independent shows in Florida during WrestleMania weekend? Yeah, I think GCW is running right. <laughs> I believe they're going to run an event. That I, sounds about right. That sounds about right. <laughs> I yeah. mean, they were. I think they were running in Indiana before anybody. They were running in was, Indiana so. before anybody was. Uh, I expect. I don't expect a lot, but you know maybe GCW does a whole thing there, and that's that's enough. 
I think you're going to see a lot of shows running over You there. think so? Oh, I'm absolutely. Curious. I have not heard much. Have you? No, not not really. But I, I think people, it's almost like it didn't occur to people that they could run. Yeah, until now. Because yeah. they didn't expect Mania to even, like, I don't, a, a month ago, people didn't expect there to be fans anywhere. Listen, I, I, I here, here's the other thing, right? Yeah. It's a big risk. If you're, sure. if you're, I don't know, CZW, just throwing it out there. Sure. Uh, how many people do you know, Harry, that have been told there's a stand-up show and they're booked on the stand-up show and they go sure. to the show and the show is canceled? Sure, or, absolutely. Or they're, they're shut happen. down. That'll happen. It yeah. happened, I think, uh, I think Governors. It happened at Governors sure. on the island. They start shutting shows down. Yeah. So I don't know if if that's part of the fear. I don't know. I, I don't think that there's going to be a ton of them. I think GCW is probably running and maybe a couple other people, but maybe some local Florida stuff, but... You're not going to see a big, and also there's nothing left of the indies, guys. I think you got we got to look at this realistically. The, most of these indies are never coming back. Mm. We saw yes. Evolve fade away. Evolve got absorbed by WWE. We mm. have GCW. We have CZW. Uh, we don't have much. Mm. Catalyst Wrestling. Well, Catalyst Wrestling. Um, well, you know it's weird, but but they're also on sort of hiatus. So the thing about these these independent companies is they can't exist because they don't have anybody under contract. I so, think the height of the indies are done. I, I think we are now in a reset period again. I agree with that. I think it's going to be different. I think it's going to reset, but I think it'll build back up because it's just, there's just too much. There's just, the internet is just there to help promote that stuff. You know, it's just, there's always going to be more people wanting to do shows and people are going to be really thirsty for live entertainment yeah. that they can afford too, just in general. So I think it'll, but I do agree with you. It's in a weird down period now. Yeah. But we'll see what happens WrestleMania weekend. But I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are running shows. I mean, you know, Gallows and Anderson, or uh, Gallows mostly, was just talking about the shows he ran in Georgia. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, openly they were talking on their show about, like, yeah, these people are not aware that COVID is happening. <laughs> Depending on what town you're in, they're yeah. like, there was, yeah. you know, no social distancing. Nothing. Right. And that's from the town. That's not Gallows's. Yeah. Well, right. I want to... I wanna find out more about how he was i i want to say he was running shows while he was still with wwe was he i'm positive he mentioned that on his podcast that he had like a subsidiary or something i mean he was still like on the down low i mean basically he was just doing it secretly was no showing up though he was he He wasn't showing up but he was still like running shows i think and until he sold the company he said like uh which is such a weird thing to sell an independent company because oh, all you're selling them is like the ring, yeah. basically. If that, right? If that, uh, yeah. if they have. You a guys ring. ready? You guys ready for a couple more questions? Let's do it. Uh, from John Gorman, what do you think the chances are that AEW will pull a swerve and reveal that Sammy MJF are working together to get rid of Chris Jericho from the inner circle? I. It's possible. Um, I. I don't listen. I think Sammy is. They're looking at him as a breakout. For younger mm-hmm. viewership, you know him and MJF could have a long program together. I don't know what you do with MJF and Jericho if, if you're going to continue that. Uh, if you break them up, I kind of don't want them to break up because I like that they're a crew, and AEW's really big on that to have you know groups of guys mm-hmm. together. Um, I don't know. Maybe it leads to a Sammy and Jericho match. I think it. I think Jericho and Sting are going to do something together at oh, some man. point. Um, oh, face so, to face. You could say, you know, you never, you, you're in my territory now. You never right. gave me anything in, in, you know, WCW, whatever. I mean, there's just, yeah, you, you think they would have had a match, but WCW being what it was, there's so many missed opportunities there. So I think they'll set that up and that'll let MJF and Sammy work for a little bit. And, you know, it, that makes sense to me. Yeah. But we'll see. All right. Uh, Corey asks, when was the last time none of the dis- Undisputed Era was on an NXT TakeOver event? Oh, my God. Wow. That's a great question. Uh, you would have to, I guess you have to go all the way back to 2016. When everybody was still in Ring of Honor? <laughs> yeah. 2016, 2017, right? I mean, they even brought in Roderick Strong. Or, 18, 2018? Yeah, probably. Uh, maybe more. It's been a while. No, I would say 2017 at Late least. Late 2017? Because they've been there for a while. Who was there first? Uh, I, th- I think all three of them showed up at the same time, if I remember. Am I wrong about that or no? Oh, well, they were going to okay. be called something else. Do you remember? I think Roddy showed up first. 
Roddy came later. Remember, he 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 wasn't part of the undisputed era. Right. No, he no. was a foe. Roddy came after that, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't remember the timeline when they all left Ring of Honor. I think that's huh. been their best best acquisition for that brand. For NXT. So, yeah, we. I about- mean, they've gotten the most out of it. Yeah. They've been phenomenal. It's just what do you do with them now? And you bring them up to the roster and then have them not be used. Yeah. Like that's four guys that you're gonna bring, or you just bring them up and break <laughs> them up and act like none of that ever happened because that'll happen sometimes too. By the way, none of them are on yeah. the show on Sunday. Oh, is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's... Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's kinda, okay. Yeah. So, main roster push, maybe. My fear with them, and I feel like this is such like a weird kind of gripe and like, like, oh, uh, I know, I, like I'm grossed out because I know how WWE does business kind of thing, where if you put these four guys in the ring standing next to like Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman... Uh, it's done, and, yeah. And Vince has a bad day that day, he might turn around it's and done. be like, yeah. you know, forget it. Send him over to superstars or main event. Yeah. yeah. Which are both those still going on? Yeah. Both of them. Uh, main event is. Mm. Well, I can't keep trying. Main event's still on. I just saw somebody send an image of Tucker in main event, and it was one of the sadder things. You know what? It is uh, really sad. Because, you know what, Rich? I got to tell you. Yeah. You were really big on Tucker. And for months, well, close to a year, you said, you know, this guy could possibly have a huge breakout <sighs> singles run because he's a big boy, very. More chari- you know, he's charismatic, but not as much as Otis. Sure. But he's a good in ring. I thought that tag team was th- there was no reason to split them up. Broke him up. I man, agree with no- you. You broke him up no reason. to take Otis and put him with people. Right. Which I mean, like we've said this on the show several times where in the last year it's so nonsensical that you took Peyton Royce and Billy Kane split them up and then put them with other people and then right. Otis and Tucker and Man- then you're and Mandy Mandy and uh Sonia too. Split them up and well it's it's I yeah. mean you know the reason it's just there's no plan. So here we go. Mandy and Sonia, no reason mm-hmm. to split them up. You split them up and you were going to do a freaking hair match. Didn't happen. Thank God it didn't happen, especially oh, yeah. the time that they had planned that thing to happen, right? With what the was... stock because oh, the guy that right, broke right, into right, the right, house. Right, right, right. Then you split up Peyton and... Who's uh, supposed to lose that hair match? Sonya. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So instead, they just took her off TV for a little bit. Did they explain why they brought her back? I haven't followed that. They... I... Because I, she I lost her... Remember. She is a loser leaves town, right? Loser leaves the town. Yeah, the town. Now they're in a <laughs> the different town. town. They're in a different town. They're in a different right. town We're now. in a different county. I got exactly. you. Yeah. Listen, you cannot have a match in Dade County, but you yeah. can... You can in uh, in Broward. In Broward. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You like my Florida preferences? I do. Very local. Yeah. Shout out to Justin Robert Young. Shout out to Justin Robert Young. Uh, what else do we have here? Any other questions? Uh, we got one more over here uh, right. from Louis Lamberti. Um, any confirmation on the amount of tickets they're going to release for WrestleMania? Yes. Uh, I was sold 25000 Same as the Super Bowl. Same as the Super Bowl. Twenty two to twenty five thousand. It's twenty five thousand and one, so that they can say they outdrew the outdrew. Super Bowl. You know what? Can you imagine? It's very I, petty. I, I want them to do the gimmick number, right? Like, what's the oh, gimmick yeah. number for this? Because now we're we're restricted, right? So you can't say you have ninety eight thousand people in the building when you really have seventy. So I'm mm-hmm. curious if they're gonna gimmick the number and say they've shattered the record. For they COVID. have shattered the COVID you know entertainment record. Can yes. I, you know what? I'm gonna say no. They Texas ran a full show. Yeah, you're forgetting. Texas had like fifty thousand. We're people. forgetting about college football. Yeah. Forget it. There's yeah. no way WWE can break that record. Okay. Alabama just did I'm gonna it last call week. It right now. Or Georgia. I'm gonna call it right now. Yeah. Okay. WWE's gonna call forty two thousand people in that building. Oh okay. wow! They're gonna say that it's forty two thousand. They're gonna say 000. yeah. They're gonna say forty two thousand. What is the people pur- in the I mean, it's ego, but what is the purpose of that? That's nowhere near shattering the record. I mean, WrestleMania didn't. WrestleMania three didn't have you know. Whatever they said, yeah, ninety eight thousand people. That's it was seventy four. Poor what, Dave Meltzer number? gets still to this day. He gets his ass handed to him online by people telling him he's wrong. That's what number WrestleMania is this? Fifty nine. Uh, no, thirty seven. Thirty seven. I bet you the number is going to be thirty seven thousand. Oh, oh, that's actually that's interesting. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'll go with you. Thirty seven. I mean, 000. if you're just going to be picking them arbitrarily, why not make yeah. it a nice even? Yeah. OCD style. Ninety-seven thousand six hundred and thirty-three. Oh, hundred percent. They're gonna go. Oh, what a coincidence! It was meant to happen. Thirty-seven thousand people. WrestleMania thirty-seven, and then 
have some kind of classy Freddy Blassy hologram show up. <laughs> yeah. I just, by the way, I went down a a, a Fred Blassie rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, I watched Breakfast with Blassie with him and Andy Kaufman. Oh, sure. Yeah. I got to tell you. The, but it was such great comedy because mm-hmm. they they were in on the joke, right? Everybody sure, yeah. was in on the joke, but it was so, they were so good at ad-libbing this shit out of that out of that video what it's like an hour long yeah it's a mm-hmm. very bizarre little thing i saw i just watched the first half of it less they're than in, a year they're ago. in la they go to breakfast and freddie blassie is screaming he's like don't talk to the broads <laughs> like the, these girls go over and they're like hey mister can we have an autograph he's like oh, you see i'm eating you dumb broads He's like insulting them while they're eating their. And they their, want Andy Kaufman's autograph because he's on taxi. And Andy, and Andy was going to do it, but looked at Freddie Blassie. He's like, no, no, no. He doesn't want me to do it. So, and then he starts acting like a he tough guy. He starts being mean to the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Andy Kaufman stuff is always worth so revisiting. Because it's the so unnatural. Way. Him being mean is so unnatural. Oh, my goodness. It's so, for, <laughs> so good. So good. And then, of course, Letterman. The, yeah. That, the clip of him slapping Kaufman on Letterman. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Lawler, Jerry Lawler, Jerry Lawler slapping coffee. Jerry Lawler makes me uncomfortable sometimes. Does he? In yeah. What sense? I don't know. Just I, I hear you. I don't know why. I uh, get very uncomfortable. Like I, I don't know if he's like going to take something serious or he's going to take it as a joke. Then he could take it as a joke. Yeah, yeah. He's one of those. I mean, today. yeah, but he's he's got more. I mean, there's only a few moments where he's been super serious, and that most most of that was with Jim <laughs> with Jim Carrey. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Jim Carrey. <laughs> puppies, puppies. Uh, Harry, did it? Did you ever hear my uh, Jerry Lawler impression? No, let me hear it, Rich. No, I don't want to be on your podcast. <laughs> so he said to him, "Is that <laughs> true?" That, yeah. Pretty wow. Much, yeah. Oh yeah. wow. When yeah. did you ask him? Many years ago, when we first started the show, and uh, he was sitting at near Comic Con in a booth in a weird section of the show floor. It was like it was like like a like a section where people sell like comic book and manga related clothing. So he was kind of sandwiched okay. between he was sandwiched between two people selling hats. Hentai and he would, porn and hats. Hentai porn and hats. Oh, he was my just goodness. sitting there. Nobody nobody at like his table or anything. He was just sitting there hanging out, like not even looking at his phone, just hands crossed on the table, looking straight ahead. Right? I'm not the type of guy to interrupt people when they're doing something. So I was like, all right, nobody's there. Let me go say what's up. Hey, what's up, man? Do you mind if I get a couple of minutes for you for the pie? He was like, and he looked at me and he goes, no, I don't want to be on your podcast. <laughs> and then he put his head down and I was like, all right. And uh, me and my buddy wow. walked away, and that was that was it. That, that was, was your encounter with Jerry Lawler. Listen, he, that was my encounter. You got to also remember, fine. like how many people ask him probably right, to do right. stupid stuff. Can you make a video for my friend? Yeah. Can you make this? Can you? Yeah. At what point do you say no? You know what he does though. He mm. ends. He was like rich left, and he just put his head down like this with the remainder. Oh, just like to, he was so yeah, okay. So he doesn't drink, desk, right? He's not a drinker, so we know he wasn't hung over. No, he just didn't he's want just, to do it. He just was probably irritated. He's freaking, of course. He's sitting probably, next to hentai yeah. porn and hats. And also, there was Staring no line, so maybe he realized, maybe he lost some money. that because Maybe. I ran into him at a Comic-Con. He was nice. I didn't do too much talking to him, but he was actually mm. pretty chatty in the moment. So you might have caught him on a bad day. Not that I need to defend Jerry Lawler. <laughs> he might be a jerk. I don't know. I don't know the guy I personally. Like, I like that you guys are good personal friends, and you're, you're, yeah, yeah. you're defending him today. Listen, I got a... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Eric. No, I own a piece of his art. I have a oh, I, in my house. I had uh, a a Jerry a, a drawing of Adam West as Batman that he drew, and someone got it for my birthday at a comic con. I I mm-hmm. want there to be a series where it's just wrestlers painting. Oh yeah, like Damian Demento drew that of me. Oh, is that true? That is true. 100. Oh, wow. percent Yeah, Jerry Lawler's pretty. He's, he's he is a genuinely talented artist. Like his yes. work is really good. So I don't know who else would who else does art in wrestling. That we Jeff know. Hardy. Jeff Hardy, okay. Yeah. A few other the, people. Um, the Illuminummies, or, as he calls them. The Illuminummies? That's what they were called. He would have these big statues in, in on his North Carolina ranch. Yes. That, and he made them? Yeah, he like welded them or something. Like there are statues in the sense of like they're, you know, like uh, steel scrap metal that's formed yeah. into the shape of like a stick man yeah. figure. Steve Austin, he draws. He Does paints. he? Yeah. I did not know this. Uh, I want. I, no, he doesn't, but I want to see that oh, show. Oh, Jesus. Like a Bob Actually, Ross style Steve Austin. Well, goddamn. Goddamn, pal. You want a bunch of happy little trees here? Give me a hell yeah. Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis is a talented yeah. artist. He's a yeah, talented he's artist. very good. Yeah. Uh, rich, rich, I, rich, rich is a talented artist. There you go. Thank you. 
I don't have anything against Jerry Lawler. I just thought it was funny. No, hilarious. I well, you, and did, I, you did get you did get robbed by Virgil. I did get. Oh, that was when oh, I was like one of the many. Ago. One yeah. of the many. Yeah. How did he get you the photo? The old photo scam. He got me with the old photo scam. I was me and my buddy. Another another. Uh, it was at Madison Square Garden Comic Convention 2000, 2001. And uh, me and my buddy met, and WWE was having a show that weekend, like mm. a house show. Oh, wait a minute. This was 2000, 2000. So you were young. Yeah, I was like 19, I thought 20. This, I honestly thought this was like 2010. I know better. If only uh, because Virgil has continued to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and probably still will. So I, it's classic Virgil story. Me and my buddy are like, oh, shit, it's Virgil. And he's like, what's up, guys? How about a picture? And I go, sure. And then we take the picture and he's like, all right, $20. And he puts his hand out. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize. And he was just like kind of at this point. Now I know what he was doing. But back then I was like, well, this guy's not leaving me alone for 20 bucks. Let me just give him 20 bucks. So I give him 20 bucks. Big autograph. He's, he gives me like a big autograph picture of himself. And then again, there's nobody really there to see him. He followed me and my buddy around the convention for like an hour. Like, what's up, what? guys? How you doing? Hey, Virgil, what's up, man? You guys doing all right? Yeah, good. We rounded another corner. He was there. Was this to get money? He didn't ask for any more money than the 20 I gave him. He just okay. wanted to harass so him. So the tr transaction is done. And Transaction's then done. So he got yeah. money from you. He got money, and then I got stuff. I was disgruntled, and then he kind of just was there at every turn. We were, like, haunted. <laughs> That was so creepy. The haunting of Virgil. He just followed you around like like a, like a ghoul. And it was like a small <laughs> show floor. So there really wasn't a, like that many places to go. This is before yeah. like New York Comic Con where it's like Blew up Javits big. Center. This is like in a loading area of Madison Square Garden where it was mainly retailers and maybe like, you know, like Virgil and like, I want to say like Raven was there and we ran into the hurricane. Hurricane took a bunch of pictures with us and chatted about comics, which was awesome. Didn't ask for money. That's nice. Nice. That's a good hurricane. hurricane a good story. guy. All right. We got Someone a positive. Tweet that about that to hurricane that in Sugar 2000, hurricane 2001, helps. he didn't ask for a dime. Well, Thanks maybe no, wait a minute. Money. Was this the same time as Virgil? This is the exact same show. Oh, so you know what? Then you're, you're years off. You're probably in like, oh, one, oh, two. Okay. Was he the hurricane? He was dressed head to toe as a hurricane. Okay, so that would have to be 2000. 2001 at the minimum because that's minimum. the invasion angle. Mm -hmm. And then he's not the hurricane. Did so someone like... say invasion angle? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I got to go. All right, let's wrap it up, guys. <laughs> uh, that's it for this week. We'll see you all on Sunday. For all things Harry, follow Harry. He's on that's Twitter. Right. Go to at uh, Harry Trajanian and also check out the other podcast I do with uh, Dante Nero, Man School 202. It's uh, sex and relationship advice uh, for men and women. Great it's show. Great show. I've been on it. Yeah, Andrew's been on it. You can I see have. the episode on YouTube if you want to see Andrew on it. I have. Great show. Rich? Yes, sir? BTC 2.0. Oh, that's right. BTC 2.0. <laughs> I, I forgot that we're doing these now. Um Hey, you can follow me at BTC Rich on Twitter. Uh, I got my podcast out once a week on YouTube. BTC Rich X is the channel. Uh, I talk about comic books. Can you have me on just to talk about 90s X-Men? Yeah, absolutely. Freaking love 90s X-Men. Nice. The cartoon. Come, come on the and show? pop the territory. Anything, Jim, love Jim Lee. <laughs> Fair enough. Love it. Yeah, uh, you it. can follow me at Andrew Zarian on Twitter. Matt Men Podcast on Twitter. Matt Men Pro Wrestling on TikTok. Matt Men Podcast on Facebook. Matt Men Podcast on Instagram. The Matt Man Podcast group. We're also available everywhere podcasts are available. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. Subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever the hell you listen to your podcast. Uh, also, we are on the F4W website, on the Wrestling Observer website. Head on over to F4Wonline.com or WrestlingObserver.com. And you can check us out there. We'll be there this Sunday, guys. Broadcasting live for our watch along for NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. Nice. Uh, we'll have more information posted within the next day or two about that. And that's it. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye for now. Later.